morning and welcome to the Opie and Anthony program. Good morning. Did everyone sleep well? Mm. Sleep. Sleep? What the hell is that? What sleep? Who needs sleep? Sleep is stupid. I got used to not sleeping a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up bright and early, Opie. Bright, early, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Well, how is everybody today? Hi, Jimmy. Hi, boys. Anything interesting man. in the papers? No. Nothing good? Nothing uh, Nothing uh, before page nine. <laughs> pervy pal. <laughs> I like to be pervy pal. <laughs> I've never had a good name in a headline. Ever. Pervy pal. Pervy pal! Hello, my pervy pal. Good morning, Dopey Opie. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it never ends. Pervy pal will be taken on whack bag within minutes. <laughs> pervy pal. I'm sure pervy pal is already named on whack bag. My pervy pal. I guess the post doesn't have a sense of humor when we trash them on a daily basis. Well, apparently, yeah. They, I guess somebody that that might have been listening and heard us goofing on their comedy bits that they like putting in their paper, their little top six list that they had yesterday, or their funny headlines. Uh, maybe they didn't like that. And now they're getting us back by calling us Dopey Opie and Pervy Pal. Good old Pervy Pal. What the hell is Jimmy? Chop liver. If you're Pervy Pal. Oh, forget, I know. If I'm Pervy Pal... Yeah. Child killer chip. <laughs> Child killer chum. Uh, horrid. Uh, I did not appreciate that. I know our John Manelli is like, uh, you know, he's had a good relationship with us over the years, but I don't think um, they come up with the headlines. That's what these writers always say. Whenever they write a story and there's a really bad headline for it and you confront them, they go, hey, we don't write the headlines. Yes, we learned a while ago that there's just one guy, and that's I think his that's whole, lying. And that's his whole job is just, just to write headlines. Write in the, headlines in the paper. He doesn't write the actual stories. You know, the stories are handed in. He reads the story real fast, and then he's the clever one at the paper, and he comes up with the headline. But wouldn't you be pissed if you're a writer and you, yeah, of course, the, the eye catcher that makes people go to your story that you toiled over is something ridiculous or doesn't really fit the story well or of course yeah you'd be like kind of pissed at that but the writers aren't smart enough to come up with the headlines that's yeah. what they're telling the writers how about you just take the first sentence of your story and that's the headline and then you continue I don't know why there has to be a headline writer that has to write Dopey Opie and Pervy Pal. I've, it's usually Dopey and Anthony or D Opie and Dopey. Pervy Pal? The fuck am I? I? I'm here like a monkey. I'm just jerking off and throwing feces at guests when they come in. Oh, you're trying to say it's not accurate? <laughs> All right. There have been a few instances where I might have earned the moniker, but... While he's Jesus, while he's bumbling around going, duh, you're patting the fanny of a lad who's dressed like Angus Young. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And Obi just looks and goes, <laughs> and I'm just on the subway cranking one out in front of Asian girls. <laughs> <laughs> Click. You know, this takes the cake, as they, as some people would like to say. Yes. You know, we've we've seen our share of headlines over the years. Certainly have. Maybe uh, maybe E Rock could be useful today. And uh, no, stop right come there. Come up with some of our old headlines. Yeah, because they are entertaining. But today, pervy pal, <laughs> my pal, the perv. Ah, right, dopey opie. I'm proud to be here. You know what though? The dopey opie is so expected. That's the I know. Easy way. That's, well, that's th why that's it's the easiest thing to do with opie. Yeah. What what else do you rhyme with it? Uh, Mopey. Scully Opie. Scully Opie. <laughs> I don't know what else you... Mopey. Mopey, if he's If sad. he was in a bad mood. He said. Mopey Opie mouths off about... And then whatever. I've seen Dopey Opie a million times. Opie and Dopey was usually and the headline, And we've though. seen Opie and That Opie, was the big right? one. When we got the boot, right. they put Opie and Dopey. Yeah. Maybe if he's all positive, you could call him Hopey. Hopey Ho Opie. Hopey. Oh, that you know would what? be good. Norm the Trucker, uh, he's got a good point here. Norm, what's up? Hey, 
Hey, guys. Uh, short-term listener, first-time caller. Um, wanted to say maybe there's a comma missing, and it was Dopey being Anthony, Opie, and Pervy Pal. Because I, I think Pervy Pal, I always have to speak, uh, little Jimmy. You know, if there was a comma there, it would save me, and I would once again only be Dopey. <laughs> because it would be Dopey, Opie, and, and Jimmy, the pervy pal. I think they're acknowledging Jimmy for I, once. I, I think there was a typo, guys. They forgot that comma. Right. Trippy. Well, that's how I'm going to play it. No, because it wouldn't be Anthony Opie. I know. It would be Opie. It would be Dopey. Comma Dopey and pervy pal. No, they wouldn't forget the comma, Jimmy. I'm sorry. They forgot about you again. They forgot the comma. <laughs> no, they forgot the <laughs> no, comma, they, guys. The comma. No, no, guys. They, well, if it makes you feel good, here. Eric, go to every newsstand, put commas in the papers. <laughs> Just for the Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Just writing commas in on everything. Grabbing yeah. them out of people's hands. Wait, I'm not done. Give me a Sharpie. Give me a nice, nice Sharpie. Give him a black Sharpie. Give me a black e Sharpie. It's the only type that works. Yeah. yeah. Hand him a yellow one so highlight it. Then look. Here you aren't. Here you go, Jimmy. Give me the Sharpie. I want a comma, too. Uh, here you go, Jimmy. In my paper. Ooh. I made a comma so you can put, put I, this in your scrapbook. If, let me have what paper... Let me have, I want to make a comma. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, comma time. <laughs> oh, that does work. Here you go. Make your comma. All right. Feel good about yourself. Now you get the moniker Pervy Pal. Now I'm dopey again. <laughs> well, you're dopey again, yeah. Jesus. Did I put it right? Dopey, opie, and comma. No, Herbie you pal, idiot. Back to me, Fowler. <laughs> you wrong pudding, comma, ass. <laughs> it's dopey opi end. I was the ass in, in class back in the day that always fucked up the punctuation. <laughs> Weird, I don't, don't know where a, to put the You don't comma. put a comma there, stupid. <laughs> anyway. I don't well, know who, where who to did put this the one? Comma. You put a comma after end. You wouldn't before end. You wouldn't do that. All right, we'll work on that in the break. All right, thank you. A new paper now. Fix this. Well, All right, good well, morning. Good morning. It's the only virus spreading across America. Thanks to XM Satellite Radio. Right. Radio, 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 radio. We love the XM. Love the freedom it gives us, Opie. Yes, that's right. This we will say be... whatever we want here. This will be the third show we do, <laughs> where we don't do the show we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest. But this will be uh, the third time. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there are, there are, there are just say things. Things. There's things there happening. There are things happening, things out there. It's not like, uh, you know... There's a bunch of secrets. I mean, things are out there in the paper. Rumors, speculation, things uh, that, unfortunately, as of right now, really can't be addressed. Hmm. That's by the show. Would you like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I remember that old gag. Want to go old school with that? Yeah. No, it just can't really be addressed in, you know, really any, any way right now on this show. Of course, other people are addressing it ad nauseum. Which is making having me a laugh lot of fun so freaking hard. Uh, we had a little pre-show listening session, and uh, it was really, really funny. Really funny. <laughs> I guess when you're in therapy, he, uh, the therapist will tell you when you're really, really angry and you want to lash out, what you should do is take <laughs> the opposite approach and talk very smoothly and in a monotone voice. <laughs> yes, make you, uh, yourself sound... Um, in control, <laughs> right. uh, not angry <laughs> right. with uh, everything that's happening, no matter how angered you are. It's uh, okay. Everything's going to be fine. Ow. 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 I noticed uh, Baba Booey is very upset, but uh, Baba Booey, join me. Ow, ow, ow. I'm getting into my uh, transcendental meditation, Robin, which uh, keeps me uh, calm, like my therapist told me. Oh, hold on. I got to go see my therapist now. I'm seeing him during the show because I ran out of hours after the show because everyone's driving me insane. <laughs> Why are they suing me, Robin? Why? <laughs> I'm the innovator. I'm the genius. I'm the one now broadcasting to 25 listeners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Melfi, uh, I don't know what to do. 
Uh, they seem to be following me everywhere, uh, ripping me off, and uh, I don't know what to do. What's it that angers you so much about uh, the news that you're reading in the papers? Uh, nothing. I've learned from my therapist to keep calm, cool, and collected. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Then how, why a shotgun? Why the shotgun with the toe trigger? Uh, just in case, Dr. Melfi, just in case. Okay, now I'm calm. That's all I got to do is chant. I chant Robin is what I do now. Dr. Melfi, I'll just call you Robin. Could you get in a glass dunking booth so I feel more comfortable talking to a woman? Hey, Jimmy, can you do Oh, my God, someone just spit in Dr. Melfi's face. Where's the police? <laughs> Go to your hoo hoo happy place. <laughs> Go to your hoo hoo happy place. Go to your hoo hoo happy place. I really uh, thought uh, half a billion dollars would make me happy, but this pisses me off. <laughs> um, um, now, now I'm fine. I don't understand why Baba Boo is so uh, upset with the situation. I was the innovator. I came over here. <laughs> Hello, uh. Hi, uh, O&A? Yeah. Look, if I want to say something to my listeners, can I just call you guys, please? <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, holy shit, what an earful we got before the show. Hey, uh, Anthony, I want to try something out. Jimmy, could you just do me a favor and humor me? Sure, Hope. You see that really big glass window behind you? Yeah. Could you just, like, walk out the studio? Stand behind it just for a little. I just want to see what that'll look like. <laughs> oh, <don't laughs> I want to see what it's going to look like. What it would look like. Yeah, keep Ooh. the door open so we can talk to him because we don't have a microphone out there. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to see something. All right, yeah, let's uh, have Jimmy outside the big Wait, glass window. There he is outside the glass window. Maybe you should hand me that. Hand you oh, no, we're not handing you. Oh, no. We're not handing you Don't the gorilla hand head. The gorilla head. <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, uh, and now, uh, Jimmy Norton with the news. Ooh. Ooh, Opie. I don't understand. Uh, oh. uh, this shouldn't upset anybody. I don't understand why uh, Bob Abu is upset. Robin, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, how do you feel about uh, uh, the, the whole thing? Should you be upset? Well, I think so if you do. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I like to hear. To the Howie Copter. Everyone's going to the Hamptons with me the weekend. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, um, relax. Um. That was a that was a very good visual, Jimmy. Yeah. You look good behind a glass partition. <laughs> and no fart smell. <laughs> Oh, I don't like being back there. <laughs> I got scared. Ah, Christ on a pony. Anyway. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, American Idol was uh, fantastic last night, wasn't Did it? Did you uh, see it? Any surprises? I think they're lying to us on that show. You think? I think they're absolutely lying when they split up the uh, contestants into the groups. I think they say that it's the bottom three... And the top three, as far as the America's uh, voting has gone. And Chris and Paris, Chris Daughtry, Paris, whatever her last name is. Yeah. And uh, Ace. Ace Young. We're in one group. And I'm like, there's no way, because I know Ace is awful and had to go. But Chris and Paris in the bottom three couldn't have happened. They were... Uh, they were the best, I think, out of uh, uh, the performances. Well, now Catherine McPhee, she was good. She was she was the best, right up there. Monday, then it should uh, have Tuesday been night. it should have been her, Chris, and Paris. Yeah, but but it's too obvious that way. They don't they don't they love the surprises, even from the beginning when they go into the rooms and tell that room full of people whether they've made it or not, and they go, oh, sorry, we had to come in here to tell you that you're not. Going home, you're going away. They love the surprise. Yeah. And it would be no surprise if you knew the top three because you saw how good they were. Uh, so I think they mix it up. I think they're lying. So they put one of the bottom three in with two of the top, which I, I think they did. I think that there's a lot of uh, people out there voting that uh, just figure Chris Daughtry was a sure in that everyone else was going to vote for him. Yeah. So, and, and I think at this stage in the game, you have a few favorites because you've been watching the show uh, a long time. <laughs> right. So you're like, you know what? 
Uh, ah, man, Chris Daughtry's going to get all the votes, so I might as well try to save Kelly Pickler with my vote this week. And she for, needed for saving. You. And she needed saving. And all of a sudden, a lot of people thought that way, and next thing you know, Chris Daughtry doesn't get a lot of votes. Because mm. you're right, it doesn't make sense on, mm. on any level that he would be the bottom three. Cause Him he, or Paris. He's pretty much going to be the winner of this thing. Yeah. Or the runner-up, at the worst. So they're doing this just to keep the suspense, so that when there's two groups of, of three people... You know that you, you don't sit there knowing that, all right, it's going to be someone in the group. They love the twist. And last night, that was huge. Yeah, that was the Everybody twist. Everybody went like, get the fuck out of here. Because on one side, you had Kelly Pickler, Elliot, <clears throat> and uh, Catherine McPhee. Yeah. And Catherine McPhee was one of the strong ones from Tuesday. Uh -huh. And then on the other side, you had Chris Daughtry, who was one of the strong ones. Paris was very strong. Yep. And Ace. Yeah, and Ace, who just stinks. So glad he's gone. Don't have to look into those vacant eyes. Lifeless eyes, like a doll's <laughs> eyes. <clears throat> well, he'll, he'll never sing a song again. Here's the announcement from last night. Two guys who are like the Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah, just in case you missed it, though. So then it comes down to Chris Daughtry and Ace are on the stage, and one of them's going home. Yeah. And they show Chris Daughtry's wife and friends, and they're all, they're like, all worried. Oh, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, no. And then at that point, what's a shore in? Did I say sure? A sh no. shoe in. A shoe in. Sorry. It's a shoe in. Sorry, we're preoccupied today. Oh, are you guys really? Are you guys thinking all day about my Chicago gigs tonight and this weekend? <laughs> it's all that's been on my mind. You Jimmy Chicago gigs. You pervy pal. All right. I'm sorry, you Ellis. That I disappointed you. Let's say hi to Ellis. Ellis. All right, he's gone. Exactly as he should be. All right. Here's uh, the announcement. So it's Chris Daughtry and Ace Young on the stage, and one of them's going home. I wonder who it would be. Two guys who are like the Matt Damon and Ben Affleck of American Idol. Best of friends here. One of them leaving us in a second on American Idol. Simon, you took credit for Chris last night doing a great job. You take credit for him about to go home, possibly, standing here before us? I wasn't the one who was singing, Ryan. What are your thoughts about these two? Ace, I think you're going to end up going home tonight. Results time, America. The person with the lowest number of votes leaving us is Ace. Chris, you are safe. Man, yeah, he dodged the bullet. There. That's it. I think he was one of the number one or two votes voted people. I don't think he was... Uh, the, the the bottom three. Never mind bottom three. He, he was like second to last. Is that what they're saying? Out of all the people up there, Chris Daughtry was second to last in votes. No, that, that, that's Ain't impossible. That part Ain't is impossible. It. They're so. pulling shenanigans. By the way, uh, uh -huh. no one's calling the show today. Yeah. Phone's either broken or deathly silent or uh, they're being screened. Oh, Travis has his thumb up his ass. No, there's no one calling the show. See, it's 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 a weird morning. Let's just be honest with each other. It's strange. It's a very strange morning, and uh, and not one phone call coming in. I mean, you know, a little odd. That doesn't make any sense, Ope. Huh? No. No, no one Opie. call. I, I honestly, I think the phone system can't handle what's going on right now, and I'm not even joking. Yeah. I know our enemies would go, see, this proves that no one's listening to them. They said this morning on the show that no one was calling. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Capital letters, angry fan. <laughs> wow. Great angry typing guy. <laughs> oh, I cannot keep track of everything that is, uh, is, uh... That is being printed. Yeah, things uh, have a uh, tendency to go viral sometimes. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I should uh, punch up instant feedback today. Yeah? Yeah, maybe I should pop that up. That would be a good what people thing. are saying. That's another way for the uh, well, listeners to get through. Well, we're trying to uh, read the instant feedback again. Yeah. We, we uh, neglected that for a while because, stupid us, we'd rather look at boobs on Pal Talk than read. <laughs> yeah, I know. We really are unprofessional. What? Uh, you don't want to talk about... Okay. What happened? What? Just tuned in. Comment FMQ. Just curious to... 
Hey, let no, are you guys going to? All right, instant feedback is useless today. <laughs> And it looks like the phones are useless, too. <laughs> All right, the phones are useless, and I can't read one thing from Pal Talk. <laughs> Wonderful. To the tits. Uh, wow, baby girls looking great, as usual. Uh, and now the web, and now the Pal Talkers are holding up signs. And... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Close the cameras down. Yeah, it is true. The phones cannot handle the volume of calls. That's true, right? So it's crashing. Uh, what's going on, Danny? Uh, well, even though you might see lines open, if you try calling, it's just busy. The phone, I mean, the lines are just taking time. Oh, look at that phone bank. Yeah, that phone bank's good, but that one's not. Yeah, that's blinking like crazy. So. Uh, all right, you know what? I guess we could go to the phones and see how far we could get. Okay, uh, hold on. Let me dust this off. I haven't right. had to use that, have you? Ahem. Turn your key, sir. What? Oh, wow, look what I got in front of me. Never what? noticed that before. Uh-oh. A dump button. Yeah, that's I. I usually have my newspapers over here. I'm putting them here right now. Watch, watch I could cough. <coughs> you, you don't really hear me because I got a cough button. Then I have an alert. I have a talk, a six, an on and off, a three. I don't know what the three is. That would probably be, don't hit that one unless the first two don't work. You know what's weird? <laughs> um, we just got a package. Ooh. Oh. And it's filled with dump buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen more dump buttons in my life. Dump. <laughs> dump. <laughs> All right. All right. Here Let's we go. Let's take a call. All right. <laughs> Let's take a call. Ed in Connecticut. Hi, Ed. Hi, guys. I just want to call and say hello. I know you're doing lonely today. Uh, you want to just say hi? Well, that's nice, Ed. <laughs> All right, hi. Thanks, Ed. Andrew. Andrew. Take care, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Be good. <laughs> Phones are exploding, Opie. Everyone wants to say hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with saying hi. No. I do uh, want to be serious for one moment and say, All right. just trust us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Must have trust. Uh, Brad in Atlanta. Brad. Good morning, boys. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Brad. I just wanted to call in and say, uh, have you guys heard anything about the new World Trade Center movie, Oliver Stone's new shit? Uh, yes. Yeah, a lot of controversy uh, about that new movie from Oliver Stone. Thanks for the call. Yeah, appreciate it. Good point. Oliver Stone not really known for his accuracy uh, as far as uh, history yes. goes when it comes to his movies. So a lot of people upset. Pesci's playing uh, Muhammad Atta. <laughs> I have one fucking weakness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two calls. And we got some real good subjects on the air already. Mm -hmm. We got a high and some great uh, talk about the new 9 11 commentary movie from Oliver Stone. Mm -hmm. Hey, this Ronnie DeFeo uh, interview is probably going to be good. That I am looking forward to. Ronnie DeFeo killed his ha uh, family in the Amityville Horror House. Yeah. Thus turning it into the Amityville Horror House, yeah. apparently. Was it supposed to be haunted beforehand, and that's what freaked him out, or did he killing his family in there make the house like evil? I don't know. I'm thinking it was uh, haunted before. It was a little evil beforehand. I haven't gotten there yet. But uh, this is his first interview, right? In 31 years. 31 years. Wow. And who's doing it? Um, is it Dateline on A and E? You've killed your family in this house. You're free to go. The cops outside arrest him. He's a kid. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he went in and just shot them all uh, with shotgun. Huh? With his, a shotgun. His interviewer was Stephen Hogg, MD, director of forensic psychiatry at Bellevue Hospital. Oh, so it's going to be very clinical. I just wanted to give like a really awful read of the sentence. No, it was good, but I mean, it had something I really didn't have much information. Uh, hospital. I like how you said that. Let's go to Dan in Jersey. Dan. Yes. Danny. Hey, hey Dan. Uh, the problem with the calls, I think it's whoever does the display, like on your unit. Yeah. It just said idle talk that whole time. And when the number's not up, my impression is don't call the show because we're not looking for calls. It I said, don't know it said what? To do with it or not. No, whatever, like the, it, whatever the pad data says, we we want calls all the time. Of course yeah. we do. Don't listen to that dreck. Yeah. No. Uh, okay. All right. That's it. All, all right. Uh, Stephen Canada has something. Steve? Hey, how's it going, guys? All hey. right. Uh, I was just curious. Maybe you guys can answer a quick question for me. Yeah. What's the weather like there today in New York? 
Well, it's currently 60 degrees, and it uh, looks like it's uh, mostly sunny Good. right Good. now. Good. It should head up to about 78 and clear. Going to be a little better than it was uh, yesterday. That's right. So get out there today. Leave the jackets at home, people. All right, you all. Sounds sounds good. Thanks a lot for the information. All right, let's go to Guzzo in Albany. Guzzo. Hey, morning, gentlemen. Morning, Jimmy. Heading over to Chicago this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, nice job with the, the show this morning. It's going very, very smooth. I, I uh, not have no problems with it. And uh, with the limited resources, you're doing a fine job. <laughs> 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're like uh, in a gold mine with a colander. <laughs> we have nothing to... <laughs> it is a little distracting. We can't really dig up uh, the nuggets we want to be digging up right now. Hey, uh, cougar hunting is alive and well in New York City. Um, Tuesday, the New York Post did a whole article on... on uh, on uh, older women and young guys. See these older broads that go out, you know. Uh, and I think uh, I think Sex in the City kind of got this whole thing rolling with Samantha. Is that her name? Yes. Uh, the older broad who's just out there trolling for young Hong, young Kong. <laughs> and, and it's just it's just not sexy. I'm sorry. I know some people have the fetish. They kind of like that kind of thing. You like the older the, woman fetish thing? The uh, younger Jimmy? guy, older not even woman. A, not even as friends. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the older, the, uh, supposedly sexy broad goes out and she trolls the bars for the young guys. Yeah. And they are known as cougars. They call them cougars. And the guys are cougar hunters. <laughs> Why is that? Is it the stalking? You ever see a cougar stalk their prey? Well... You know, it's it's the whole cat mentality. Stealth. And the cougars are kind of the older, wiser. Is that it? Just kind of ma ma mature. Looking, <laughs> looking for, for some poor athletic guy bicycling in the hills of California <laughs> right. to just pounce on and <laughs> rip his throat out and make him feel all bad about himself. Bite his cock off. <laughs> <laughs> cougar hunting. Cougar hunting. So, so there are the cougars out there, but apparently a lot of these younger guys are also cougar hunters. Yeah. Now, do they give some tips on cougar hunting? Well, the front page Booze. of Pulse, uh, one of the sections in the post, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it has a uh, lady named Diana Perez, 43. All right. And the hunter is Ben Rodriguez, 24. Yeah. 24. Rodriguez, nice uncut boy <laughs> <laughs> for the old... Codger. Illegal status. <laughs> Coincidentally, her pussy looks uncut now, too. So. Oh. <laughs> I am the... <laughs> that was kind of, you know... I am the pool boy. It's an older pussy, and it would be dragging a little bit. And... Yeah. Right. Whoa. <laughs> little Ben Rodriguez. Dame un beso, That's a ball. Rojo sucks. <laughs> I don't know why. Donde esta yeyo? Loco. Anyway, there's a whole article on where you can find the cougars in New York City. They they have places they hang. Is that it? They. The the cougars have bars they go to exclusively? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're looking for an old broad, <laughs> they're probably easy. If you're a horny young guy, I guess, are they looking for attractive guy? Because I'm thinking maybe you're, you're a little pudgy. Maybe you don't have the looks or something like that or the uh, nice car, whatever. And these no. chicks are just looking to get laid. They like good looking. I lived with, uh, there was a cougar lived in my old building. A set of balls. And she was... Smoking, and she actually—I damn it—I wish I knew her name. I would contact her. She wrote a book, "Older Women Who Pick Up Younger Guys," and uh, she was a very attractive woman, man. Like you definitely hit it. Yeah. Uh, but she was in her forties, and she would have like you know guys in her early twenties, really like you know young athletes hanging with her because she was in great shape, and uh, she actually legend wrote a book on it. I see some kind of a mommy thing with the guys, the younger guys. Maybe I don't know. You know, you get a guy in his thirties or something. That's a, a different story. That's some guy just out trolling. 
uh, getting laid. Yeah. But if you're in your 20s, and especially maybe your early 20s, and you're going after broads in their 40s and stuff, you got a mommy issue. There is a mommy issue. Maybe, or it could just be that your fetish started with one of mommy's friends. It could have been when you were younger growing up, like one of mommy's friends would turn you on. Well, maybe and you're just going for the easy lay. I don't know if they're easy, though. You don't think the cougars are easy. easy lays? They're in you a think? bar after a few drinks. You know what a right. sloppy old broad looks like sitting at that bar stool? <laughs> oh, how you doing, honey? <laughs> Lighting Chesterfields, leaving the lipstick on the no, no filter. <laughs> I'll take another Cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> so, honey, what are you doing the rest of the night? <laughs> Just, ugh. <laughs> How'd you do the voice that time? Hey, hi. The, the... <laughs> yeah, that, that might have worked in 1956. Oh, my God, the writing in the post is horrific. <clears throat> Prowl into New York City's hottest scene. Older women, young guys. Shh. The article starts Ew. with a lot of H's. Shh. Be very, very quiet. Oh. We're trekking cougar. Cougars. Urban uh. cougar. Ah, there's one now down at the end of the bar. Ain't she a beaut, mate? About 45 years old and a real ferocious hellcat she is. Blow her head off. <laughs> we'll just wait till she le leans in for a sip and then dot, dot, dot. What? I don't feel like reading anything. Exactly. No, but after dot, dot, <laughs> dot, you got a sip of what, Metamucil? <laughs> <laughs> well, after the dot, dot, dot. Hi there, would you pass me a napkin? <laughs> oh, this is an article in the post. Ah, crikey. She's pouncing on the bait. Somebody hit her with a tranquilizer dart. No, better still get her another cantaloupe martini. <laughs> cantaloupe martini, of course. Uh, it's dangerous business tracking a cougar. Why? A sophisticated species of female who seeks the pleasure of younger males. These are 40-ish women who have no qualms about picking up or getting picked up by the same boys they sent off to bed for being naughty when they were babysitters. Ugh. Men their own age? They've been there, done that, collected the alimony. Ugh. Is that what that is, or is it the fact that men their own age want nothing to do with them? Right. Because of their stupid, wrinkled faces. Men their own age are out hunting for 18-year-olds, and so it's either sit alone or go out and become a cougar. The only thing you say to a cougar is, is your daughter here? <laughs> Point her out. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cosmo talks about the cougar thing. Of course it does. It says, rather than work on a relationship that might not go anywhere, it's better to go younger and friskier. Women get the athletic sex, and let's face it, guys get the easy sex. Oh, you're right. See, they're saying it's an, it's it's an easy, easy lay. Yeah. Anyway, the article goes on and on and on and on and on and on and talk about some of the clubs and bars in New York City where you could find the cougars because they're hanging out there just waiting for you. Any tactics? I guess, but I didn't read this thing. Yeah. No, uh, that stupid reading gets in the way all the time. Reading. <laughs> Nothing's highlighted or, or anything. There's probably some great tactics on how to bring one down. Yeah, because some someone... bear trap on a bar stool. Well, you leave a fucking depend undergarment in the middle. Yeah, could someone like, <laughs> could someone highlight the good stuff on this? Or you dangle a charm bracelet in front of her, and when she starts to say, that looks like my grandson, you crack her in the back of her wig. <laughs> Give her a good sodomizing while she tips over the chair. All right, wait. Now I, I gotta carefully, uh, I gotta carefully rip out the middle part because we can talk about that while someone highlights the rest of it. Good, good job. Because they have a. Uh, you are a great newspaper ripper. You yeah. see this? Look at the. Uh, All right, well. Oh, now you're blowing it. Okay, yeah, he's under, under pressure. I'm ripping her tit off right under now. Oh, well, well, if you don't, make sure well. <laughs> Sorry, old broad. <laughs> God damn, Jimmy. <laughs> I couldn't spit it out quickly enough. <laughs> Awful joke. I shouldn't Pervy Pal have delivered watch that. Watch Pervy this. Pal did. <laughs> yes. Come on. Perfect. Nice. Perfect nice every cutting. time. All right, who could highlight this? Danny can. Of course he can. Danny. Danny yeah, look for, we're looking for tactics on how to bring down these uh, cougars. All right, so as uh, Danny highlights the good stuff, because we were too lazy to read the whole article, uh, the cougar breeds. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of categories, and this is this is kind of where the bit gets fun. Oh, good. Uh, you want to start from the bottom up or the... I uh, probably from the from from the top to the bottom would be great, right? Yeah, yeah. Because first of all, you got your top cats. They're called top cats. 
These cougars are the top of the food chain. Uh, che- uh, food chain, excuse me. Classy, rich, pampered, and ultra hot. All right. Find that at hotel bars in the peninsula or Essex House. Think Ivana Trump, Jerry Hall, or Sarah Ferguson. All right. They got some cash. They're looking good. Probably got a little work done. Got lots and lots of money. Right. A lot of work done. You know they're old, but they're trying. But they're trying. So much work done. It looks like she has like a meaty slip between her bosoms. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't that some... Say. <laughs> Say. Wasn't that somewhere else? <laughs> then you got the slut cat. Slut cat. Right below the top cat. These cleavage-bearing, twice-divorced alley cats can be found shooting pool alley. and chain-smoking parliaments at uh-huh. dive bars on Monday yep. nights. Think Janice Dickinson and Kim Cattrall Yeah. Sex in the City. Totally. You walk into a bar and you see one of those old broads shooting pool, and there's, like, guys around her, vultures. Yeah. She's just done. Then you got the Euro Cat. Again, with the bull cue. The Euro Cat. These sultry and sophisticated foreign felines have the olive skin and sexy Spanish and Italian accents to match. Look for the gray armpit hair. Okay. <laughs> Nothing? I was just doing well. Right. Cage these cougars with a few uh, salsa dancing moves. Oh, they, they they love to dance, the old broads. Yes. Yeah. Think Isabella Rosalini. Ugh. How about I don't? Or how about who, who's the one that played Tony Montana's sister? Oh yeah, think of her now. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the buff cat. The buff cat. These gravity-defying fitness fanatics have the bods of women half their age. Mm-hmm. Keeping up with them is a workout, and we're not talking about the gym. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> I get it. I better dump that. Oh no, we don't no, have to dump yet. Of course not. Uh, I think Madonna, Demi Jane. Moore, and Jane Fonda. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And, and then you got the Rock Cat. You know, that's the something traitor cat. tells me. <laughs> the traitor cat. Fuck it with a North Korean Treasonous. helmet over his face, even though it was Vietnam. <laughs> Wrong war, shit, Dick. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Ugh. Treasonous cat. <laughs> Those broads are the ones that uh, look good with their clothes on, maybe. You know, the buff cat. The buff cat? Yeah. Yeah. Once the clothes come off, nah. And then you got the rock cat. Spot these downtown rock and rollers by the badass tattoos and leather jackets. (laughs) They're ferocious in the sack. Plus, I have stories about partying with the stones. Think Chrissy Hine. Yeah, the kidney stones. <laughs> Debbie Harry and Joan Jett. <laughs> Wonderful. What is that? Uh, Iraq. Tony's sister. Is that her now? Yeah. So. No, she looks like a cougar. What's her real name? Could be. Uh, Let's go to uh, Carl in New York. Carl, what's up? Hey, guys, how are you doing today? What's up, hot Carl? Nice guy. Hey, I listen to, hey, you guys. Yeah, listen, uh, when I was 16, uh, I lost my cherry for a woman that was twice my age. And uh, and all, all up and through my 30s, I was going out. I was always hunting for uh, older women because it was a nice, easy, quick way. It, there was no mind games. It was like, hey, you want to fuck? Let's fuck. Um, instead of trying to deal with girls my own age, you know, teens and in their 20s, got to play around a little bit. It was easier just to pick up an older woman. That's all it was to it. Easier, yeah. It was just an easy lay? Yes, it, it was because they knew what they wanted. And they and I wanted the same thing, so yeah. I mean, it was just easy. My thought on this is, if you're a cougar and you're out at a bar, you don't have morals at that point. No, yeah, why would you have morals? But movies or TV shows could kind of want to romanticize it and let the cougar think that she's, you know, something, a looker, and the guys are after them because of that, and not because they're the, you know, the wounded gazelle on the plains of the Serengeti. Not you know? gonna happen, guys. No, they want. They want to get fucked, and they want to get fucked good. They're not with their old man, and they want and they want somebody young and th- that can last and just pound it to them. Uh, well, and, uh, and I was glad. But Anthony's on to something. The Cougars think they're sexy and hot, right? And still relevant out there in the dating world or in the bar world. No, it, the, the reality is, they're one step above your pillow. Yeah. It's either go home and you know have sex with your pillow or bring one of these bras home. <laughs> Easy pickings. Well, well, I'm 46 now, and I'm looking for older women. I'm looking for still somebody in their 30s, maybe, you know, something like that, you right, know? Right. I'm not cruising for older chicks these hey, days. If you can't find one, why don't you just go like, to the doctor's office 
and take some white nurse shoes and stick them under that skeleton he has in his office and jerk off to that. It's creepy. Oh. Find a teenager. <laughs> Good advice, Jimmy. Good advice. All right. Thanks, Carl. Let's go to Jack and New Hampshire. Put a fucking flowered hat on it. Just jerk <laughs> off. Dude, I've been scolding you. About this. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. That's all right. Uh, Dude, I... When uh, I had a roommate, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever, he listens to the show, it doesn't matter, he'll hear my voice and freak out. When he was 27, he started dating this 52-year-old. He had met her at a bar, she said she was 39, then she was 42, then she was 46, and my buddy worked at a credit place, did a background check on her, we found out she was 52. Cool. My other friend took her daughter to the prom. And he used to bring her to our place all the time and bang her out. You could hear her fucking screaming or like through her guttural voice, like yelling for my lover. We caught him giving a getting a blow job in the garage. It was just one of the most fucking horrendous scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. It's some fucking old lady, like the age of my grandmother, on her knees sucking my friend off. Oh, <laughs> God. She, she's blown him by fucking by a, a can of varnish. Kneeling <laughs> 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 like on a tarpaulin. <laughs> tarpaulin. Uh, I'll punch it out before he calls oh, me wow. up. So. That's really Thank funny. You, All right, let's go to Everett in Florida. Uh, Everett. Hey. Hey, they call them cougars because of that strong musky smell coming from the fur. You mean <laughs> they smell gamey? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know. If you want a <laughs> sure way to get a cougar, you piss on your foot because there's nothing like buck urine to lure them in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> using real hunting techniques. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go to Kentucky, <laughs> Scott. You're next on the Opie and Anthony program. Hello. Hi, Squat. Hey, uh, what about the other class of cats, the pole cats that you can find along a railroad in New Jersey? Yeah, see, I went to your phone call. I went to your phone call because in the comments section it says, Lady Die, a cougar? Right. <laughs> well, that too. That, and then we could have had fun saying she was a hobo cougar. Or but he something tried like to that. make something of it. Or a hobo cat. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, sir. Yeah, well, that, uh, thank you. Thanks for nothing, sir. You sure. flopped. Let's go to Max in Dallas. Max. Hey, what's up, boys? We got a question for Jimmy. All right, Max in Dallas. Hey, uh, was Helen your first cougar? I don't know where Helen came from. Um, fantasy cougar. That was my fantasy you know, friend. Was beehive for you and all that? No, it wasn't a sexual thing with Helen. Um, she was just my friend, and I would talk to her. She had a frosted beehive wig hairdo. Oh, Jimmy had some imaginary friends when yeah. I was a well, kid. It was Jimmy Robinson and Helen. Yeah. All right, Danny uh, came back with the article, Ooh. and he's got some stuff highlighted. Oh, wow. Let's see. Uh, what a fast little highlighter. Let's see what happens here. Uh, websites charting the phenomenon, like GoCougar.com. Let's go to these websites real fast. GoCougar.com feature an urban cougar of the month. And even subcategorize saucy women under 40 as pumas and those over 50 as jaguars. <laughs> oh, over 50? Over 50. How about jalopies? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Like> Edsels. <laughs> jaguars. Jaguar. Well, don't the jaguars have, like, the longer hair and stuff, right? Go cougar. You'll never go back. A jaguar. Mm, where's the, register? Some old lady with big saggy tits and a serious unit in the middle of her. I don't want to register. Nothing? We weren't listening. Wow, that one. We're very preoccupied. Here's how badly that one bombed. Yeah. Not only did it not get a laugh, <laughs> but I was looking over at Ann's monitor. The scroll didn't even slow down. No. It just kept scrolling. Kept scrolling. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I didn't hear. Oh. You want to say it again? Okay. I said I wouldn't say it again. <laughs> no, but I said that was it. No, I wouldn't say it. I want to get... I want, is everybody sitting down in there? Because there's a gem coming. I wouldn't say it again. What is it? I said... Uh, I the, hope you're feeling good about yourself today. It's the Jaguar, right? The old ladies, right? Yeah. Were they the Jaguars? Yeah. Yeah. I was saying that because they're old, they're Jaguars, that she's like an old lady with wrinkled tits, and she has a serious unit in her. Because they, they, what happened was serious is, oh, is wow. in Jaguars. Oh, wow. And I, um, I, I, well, maybe you didn't hear it. <laughs> but it was, it stunk. <laughs> I thought it was terrific, Jimmy. Me too. I'll reword that one for later. For setting his cougar traps last week, Rodriguez... His cougar traps. Let's not forget Ben Rodriguez. <laughs> ah, 
traps. Cougar traps. He See? leaves a, a white line, and then he hits him with his cock when they walk over. Hey, <laughs> Bostono. <laughs> Bostono. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, this guy's on his uh, way back from his favorite cougar. Craig, what's up? Hey, what's up, fellas? What's hey. up, Steak Tip? Hi. Hey, uh, I live down in, uh, like, right around Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and, I mean, as much as I enjoy the younger women, it's all games. The cougars, they're all smoking. They might be a little plastic, but, I mean, you know, they pay for everything. You're fucking good, and that's about it, man. Don't get any better than that. And you're into that, right? Uh, you know, I'm getting into it. It's all right. <laughs> getting into it. It's just delving into oh, I ain't fucking no grannies, but I mean... No? It's... No, hell no. But I mean, you know, cougar down here, no lady down here is like 38, 40. It's just... Uh, it's not that bad. I mean, shit, I'm 35. All right. There's uh, notes being passed around here. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to have crashed uh, gocougar.com. Mm. Can't get on any of the uh, pages there anymore. All right. Uh, for setting his cougar traps last week, Rodriguez, let's not forget Ben Rodriguez. <laughs> Parental de Marco. Oh, it sucks. I took six years of Spanish, and I can't even help Believe, you out. Do you know what I just came up with? Uno, dos, tres. That's all I had. <laughs> that's, that's it. And he, does, and he, he doesn't say that. No. No. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three. No. Don't work. No. All right. Uh, this is Rodriguez. You don't approach women. You just make yourself conspicuous. Go near them and look out the window or sit at the bar alone with a book. Hi, <laughs> Oh. Ben hangs out at the bar and fiddles around with his iPod. <laughs> All you got to do, that could be the entire sentence. Hi, says another cougar. This one, a uh, Chardonnay-clutching human resources exec at a cable TV network named Judy. Uh, she's early 40s. Uh, what are you listening to? I like lots of things, answers Ben. Rock, mm. jazz, rap. <laughs> and then the cougar says, oh, I love rap. Says Judy, overselling it with too youthful uh, enthusiasm. Mmm. Not too Spanish translation. <laughs> Good boy. Hey, it's great dating young guys, says Sabina, who's in her mid-30s and likes her men a decade younger. They don't have any hang-ups. They're just looking for fun. They've got great bodies. Plus, they all hang out together in groups, so if you meet one, suddenly you're at a table with about five good-looking guys. Ooh. Five good-looking guys come over for one cougar? Nah, she goes over to their table. Uh, back, back to Ben. Ben saunters up to order a drink at the swanky pentop lounge on the roof of the Peninsula Hotel. And then he drinks and forgets all about the cougars and just talks to people <laughs> over and over again. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. You think Ben tells the cougars the same story? Same story over and over long. again. Scratch the head. Albino. I wish I knew Spanish. <laughs> this is the worst Spanish translator I've ever come across. Uh, I don't know any Spanish. All right. I need to be more diverse. Well, here we go. How many floors do you think there are in this building? Asked the flirtatious Rhonda, a nearly 50 year old wife of a Texas millionaire. Breaking the ice with a question nobody really cares the answer to. Apparently, Rhonda's husband is either at their mansion in Dallas, at the ski house in Colorado, or possibly at their fairway side spread in Northern California. In any case, he's not here at the Pentop Lounge, but his credit card is. A few rounds of lemon drops later, and Ben is giving her a foot rub. <laughs> oh, dude, creepy Ben. I swear to you, the next line is in print in the New York Post. She tossles... Ben's hair. <laughs> <laughs> no way. She tossles his hair. She tossles Ben's hair, 
Probably trying to neaten it. <laughs> Thankfully, managing not to snag mm-hmm. either her wedding ring or diamond encrusted Rolex in his gelled uh, black locks. Los caballeros uh, esta libre. Spanish, Paul. In Spanish? Yeah. Very nice. How do you say on the arm in Spanish? <laughs> on. All right. Mm. On the arm, huh? We're free. En el brazo? I say free. Libro. Libro. Right. Mm, yeah. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible. <laughs> All right, here we go. So uh, the cougar uh, says to Ben, and untuck your shirt too, she says, pulling out his Oxford and sneaking a peek at his abs. Oh. Feel my abs, she says, pulling his hands to her taut midsection. Not. She got those uh, abs by uh, doing Pilates and fly fishing. A young hottie from Long Island named Jordy slyly sneaks in next to the ladies' man and starts making conversation. Don't I know you? You look familiar, she asks, stealing Ben's attention from irritated older woman uh, Rhonda. I just love your bracelet, Rhonda quips to the flirty 21-year-old who's obviously trying to steal her young trophy bow. Oh, thank you, answers Jordy. I got it for my sweet 16. <laughs> really, says Rhonda. Blah, blah, blah. He, blah, he'd, blah, be blah. Gone, he'd be gone a second. Yeah, it's a law of the jungle. Don't ever get between a cougar and her prey. Cascado <laughs> Redante. What does that mean? Amigo, amigo. All right. Let's say hi to Eric in Colorado. Eric. Hey, guys. Hey, there's a restaurant out here called Cool River. That they ch- everybody changes the name to Cougar River because that's all it is. It's just a bunch of older women trying to get laid? Oh, oh, that's all it is. I've got a bunch of friends who go there all the time, and I went with them one night, and I, it was, like, disturbing. There was just all these women, late 30s, 40s, early 50s, and they just walk up to you, you know, start <laughs> try to have a conversation. After 20 minutes, they're like, so, you want to buy me a drink and go to a bar or, or go to a hotel with me or something? It's like, where the fuck did this start from? Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I don't know. Well, how long has the place been there? I don't know. Do you go there yourself? No. Come, I mean, um, well, we gotta, dude, you got to tell more about it. Like I said, I was like punching out. Why, though? Too late. It's been terrific so far. This How do you punch out of a crash All right, we after it's happened? Piernas de la Salsa. <laughs> gravy legs. <laughs> oh, old gravy leg. <laughs> Mark Parento, un toucher del cabrito. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would, all it would be is <laughs> the one word description el gesto no el bastono a Lenny the Clarko Mila Ketero <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Spanish Ben. Why don't we take our first break? <laughs> All right. Wow. Maybe we should An just already. Maybe we should just take requests today. Maybe that's the way to do this type of show today. I don't know. Someone did request the uh, hundred grand bit. We haven't played that in a while. Ooh. And they really did. And I'm not just making that mm-hmm. up. The guy just couldn't wait around anymore. He was on the phones. Sure. Maybe we could uh, just take requests today. Yeah. We're the only talk show that you could do that with. Mm hmm. A couple of distractions. Like, I don't today. think you could, like, call, you know, Rush Limbaugh and ask for a request. Could you play that bit you did on I'm not even Clinton kidding. back in, like, yeah. 19. Uh... We have enough bits where we could actually take requests. Mm hmm. Sean Hannity does, can't take requests. No, very hard. Bill Call in Spanish is pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Fuck the hundred grand. Oh, remember that? That's uh, what I say. Fuck the hundred grand. Why, why did we do this? Oh, 
I, I, don't I came up when we did this. We bit. were talking. I'm like, dude, that would be funny in Spanish. No, you did not. You know, Danny, Danny, help us out. It's all stealing credit, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to like uh, get a Spanish audience. It was when Bloomberg was uh, being reelected, I believe. And right, he right. Was doing the uh, campaign ads. Wow. In Spanish. In Spanish, because yeah. he wanted to get the Spanish vote. So we said, you know what? We want more listeners to this uh, fine program. Mm -hmm. So uh, we should start doing our bits in Spanish. In Spanish also. So we translated one. Yeah. So we should play the original and then we'll play it in Spanish. Just so it makes sense to people. Yeah. The famous bit, uh, Bill's dead. Uh, Woman so called up, uh, thought she called her friend. Mm -hmm. She inadvertently called a radio station that we worked at, and uh, we kind of told her pretty badly. Pretty badly. So this is the original call, and then we'll follow it up with the Spanish. A lot of things. That's of why things. we're taking requests today. Lots and lots of requests. A lot of things. Let's in take our air. first request. Dave in Iowa. Dave? Free bird! <laughs> Dave oh, wants to hear free bird. <laughs> oh, God. I hope he was just saying he had to take a dump. I did say I have to take a dump, man. No, we cannot. I will make you a bet. What? I will put on a three-minute Beatles song, and yeah. I will take a dump, and I'll be back in the seat. Can you leave the mics on? Yeah. What Beatles song? It depends. Put it in my life. Like you won't even have the first log out before it's finished. You want to hear some Freebird? No. Not something that long. I want to hear, uh, you want to hear, I want to hear Anthony sing Freebird as as the mama from Good Times. Jesus. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a challenge. <laughs> I, I actually got to think about that. <laughs> Katie's got to get I'll her, Katie's gotta get her roots done, out. man. <laughs> Katie Craig's got to get her roots done. Ah, uh, she's waiting. She don't care about the uh, this show anymore. No, she don't care about the uh, Today Show. Oh boy, I I know exactly. She's on. She figure. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> not just kidding. Oh my God, you are just gonna st drive people insane. Shirt's itchy. Why is your shirt itchy? I washed it. I don't know. What'd you wash it with? I my 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 my, my washing machine. It, it, uh, washing washing machine. I can read. Mister Johnson is gonna read. I uh, start things. Can't wash it. Let's say hi to Carolyn. Carolyn in Virginia. Hello. Or is it Caroline? Caroline. It's Caroline. Caroline Brian. Brian. Yeah, Caroline. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, listen to this. What should we do you for? Cougar. You know, it's funny. When I first moved down to this area, I was, you know, a little older, like in my tw mid twenties, and I worked in the club older? in DC, and I was a bouncer there, and um. Like, everybody that went there, of course, is like 18 and over. So I'm like, oh, I sound a little hottie. And this is before I had a boyfriend and stuff. And I was like, oh, he's really cute. Now, you have to be 18 to get in, but we would fudge people sometimes, like if they were 17. So um, people used to make fun of me because they'd say, oh, my God, you're the big this cradle robber, stinks. you know, because I was like 26. <laughs> And, you know, this would kill five minutes, a, a young what obviously it's not. <laughs> so you were 26, and, and you, but you would let some of the younger guys in, right? Shut up, Jimmy. She's, an, uh, what happened. she's a Start cougar. Or you used to be a cougar? No, yeah, I used to be. When did you I, go I from cougar to boar? Because, <laughs> what? How, well, how, how long have you been dating younger guys? Um, we're awful. How long have I been dating this guy? Well, no, oh, but just in general, I'm Jimmy, saying how long. Jimmy, shut up. This is an interesting call. Oh, the other one? Shut up, how, yeah, how long? So Wawa penis. <laughs> oh, please. Play Dee Dee Sing. I'm really good friends with her. Who are you good friends with? Dee Dee. Nobody cares. No one cares. About her. All right, let's hear it. Um, She's got an older man friend. Oh. Well, no, no, start at the beginning I, and I, tell I, the story. No. no. Okay. How old Don't. are you? Yeah, how, how old are you? How old are you? Me? Oh, 34. See, you can't be a cougar yet. All right, yeah, you're not a yeah. cougar. You got some. You still got some juice left. Yeah. yeah. When you're like 27 and you're getting with the 17, you know, it's the same kind of thing. You don't have to go no. with the artificial juice. Yet. Yeah. The old. Oh. <laughs> My medication, right? We know. <laughs> One of the side effects: a dry vagina. <laughs> You'll have to deal with it with the KY. It's like going to my aunt's house and I see that stuff. I'm like, what's going on in here? Ew. Ugh. You know, you do realize that we're asking the listeners to really, really step up today and help step us out. Step it up. 
Step what? it up. We are so preoccupied. And you failed miserably. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shut your face. <laughs> oh, I'm a so. Hey, what are you? I must well say something. <clears throat> I don't know. Mm. Did all. Everyone else can say something. We can't say something. Well. We, we can say this. Hey, stupid. Oh, what happened? That was nothing. Steve. Exactly. You don't call Steve stupid. Oh, is he cranky today? He didn't even turn around either. Steve is really grouchy. Oh, I'm trying oh. to do production. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love you so very much, He's Jimmy. hugging. Don't I feel slim? He's wow, hugging you have, you Jimmy. Got something backed up in here. Why are you rubbing his belly? I don't know, because I can't That's hit him so in the face. That's so gross. Because I can't hit him in the face. <laughs> it's not gross. I'll be a couple like of men. I like my job. I can't hit him in the face or I'll get Why are you here. cranky today, Steve? I don't know. Just, I got a lot of stuff to do. Why do you Steve's have a lot busy. of stuff? Oh, yeah, you do. Steve is very busy. I am really fucking busy. Yeah. <laughs> really Can't busy. really specify why. What am I going to do with this sweeper? You mean you're really bleeping <laughs> busy? <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> why would he be busy? I, oh, I'm I just guessing. Know. He's got know. things to do. He's got things to do. He did hand in this latest, latest uh, uh, promo. <laughs> See, for, this for is what program. he's been busy doing. That's right. right. Let's take a listen to this. First time uh, being heard on the show. From the far east of Long Island comes a new breed of hero. This is Greg Opie Hughes. A legend. I'm a mess. An uncommon warrior. Na, 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 na. His skin is the color of converted rice. That's right. His blonde locks flow like morning sun through a wheat field. Way to know your audience. His shrouds are as dark as his tortured soul. I'm a black ninja, fuck face. In a race against time, the black ninja challenges his deadliest foe. Good old cobra back. He's in a mansion, and he has as a bunch of ghetto chicks fighting for his love. Training daily in his minimalist Upper East Side dojo. I just whack it and whack it and whack it. Accompanied by a mayonnaise slurping apprentice. A boy trapped inside the body of a man. What's wrong, her? My crotch is burning so bad. Ew, ew. On a mission to find the thief who stole the XM unit out of his car. Holy shit. Now, man. A fearless warrior who refuses to back down. We're all fucked. A master of disguise blending into his surroundings. Say, anybody Nobody seen that ninja? Right here, you asshole! No one can escape the wrath of the Black Ninja. <laughs> Coming soon to a dojo in Jersey. <laughs> Jersey? I live in Jersey. I'm a goddamn Black Ninja. Bring it on. Uh, very good. <laughs> I like it. I like that it. That is funny. Does anyone understand that last Jersey what? reference? Did what? anyone understand? Did anybody else understand that last Jersey reference? Jersey. I live in Jersey. Derek told me to put that in there, and I just don't know what that's from. What you did? What? Stop. Don't point. They're all laughing at you, Steve. Of course. They're pointing and laughing. I know. You're their boss, and you're and you're blaming them. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I, I did it. I did it. I just don't get it. In the, the end, end we get it. But it's in it. the end, you could have just said, you know what, I don't get it, so I'm not going to throw that in my fine Black Ninja promo. That's right. Nah, hell with it. This could start a new trend. Oh, yeah. I've already Black got Ninja it. promo thing. Yeah, we are. We're going to do a recurring Black Ninja promo. I like it. When, when last we left. Right, exactly. Black Ninja. Yeah, that would be good. Patrice O'Neill. Ah. Uh, what's up, Patrice? Speaking of Black, Sweet. but not Ninja. You get my uh, text mail? Uh, where? About, um... On this? About you. What did I do? About, um, you off the egg on the air right now? You're yeah, on the air. we're on the air. And, uh, Ixnay on, uh... Ixnay on any, anything A, you might have Ed Ray in gay, E, they, Aper's pay. Right. Yeah. Do not, for now, We can't address that. For once, we're going to be smart in our careers. One time, because we're going we to have to be smart at this point so our career, in our so career. Just, so just make I'll, believe that's not happening. During the commercial break, doing. we'll uh, fill you in. The fuck y'all do now? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Exactly. Wait. What did I do, though, that you were texting? Wait, a lot of... Did you email me? I text mailed you something. A I didn't get a of, text from you? I, on this thing? I guess, man. I mean, I have one of these... these um. You know, Cause it, my it might not be compatible with texting pebbles. I have yeah, one of what's these. wrong with my pebble? Oh. I mean, I have like one of these phones that you know for businessmen. 
You know, real business. Well, yeah. Real white business. Is yours, <laughs> is yours open to the side like that? Oh yeah, I got. Well, you get the web on and everything. Same type of uh, situation going on. Yeah, yeah, I got. I got the black. See, I, I let's, need let's one of those hot now. Sink. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little hot, but compatible. You can the hot sync with each other. Huh? Functional. I'm, I may oh, want to just... zoom. Hit. What do they call it uh, when you send somebody a contact through the uh, little a little beam? Port. Let me tell you how smart I am. Sword fight with each other with him. Let me tell. Hold on a minute, because he's making fun of my pebble. Let me tell you how smart I am. Lovely. This is personal. Not many people have this. And there's a reason for that. And then I got the BlackBerry when it's all about business. Are you still just so I can leave business behind and leave it in my apartment? Remember the BlackBerry? And just walk around with my right personal phone. Days. See, I'm trying to separate the two. I mean, it's uh. BlackBerry's cool. I have a typewriter I carry in my wallet. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with the BlackBerry. <laughs> hey, BlackBerry thumbs up. Actually, mine, uh, mine, Flash. mine did, mine did fry, and I got a new one today, so I'll be up and running again. Did you lose all your info? Is that like, or is that stored in your computer? I have, you have no idea. Sink. I have Fun, no idea. Funny story about Opie's uh, BlackBerry. Funny story. Uh, it broke, and all of a sudden, just started sending emails oh, out to people on its own. Yes, to people that shouldn't be getting emails at this time. Oh. <laughs> How hysterical is that? Opie called up panicking and going, oh, this guy got three emails from me with no content, thank God. Well, there's a lot going on, obviously, and now i got to tell a story. So so Lindsay goes, you sent me an email. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm you know, sitting right next to you. I'm like, she goes, no, I'm checking my email, and you sent me an email, but it's just blank. I'm like, what? And then I got people, people. Yeah. Also email me going, hey, uh, if you're trying to email me, please send it again because I'm just getting a blank email. The subject heading M4M massage. <laughs> 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 so I guess the BlackBerry has just been emailing pretty much everybody on my email list. I love when a machine can just start doing things and yeah. and like then, that by itself. And it's starting even uh, even more things because people want info and they think I'm reaching out to them. You're not. In a top secret way by not having any text. I got a blank email from you, Hope. Yeah, so uh, a certain person got seven of those. Are you trying to oh. fix your thing? And seven hello, Joshua? Joshua? Yes, so that is uh, that is true. What, what are you talking now, about, What are you Anthony? texting me about me? By the way, oh. he's now known as the pervy pal. Yeah, that's what it said in the paper. I don't know. I, why. I didn't. I got. I got to find out about. Yeah, this. we'll update. You. Yeah, we will. Sure. You've been downgraded from and myself. to per pervy <laughs> pervy pal. I'm dopey opie. He's Opie, dopey opie and pervy oh, pal. I thought those were your boys. I thought those were good friends. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, uh, apparently the guy that writes the headlines isn't, because any time a story comes out, uh, the the writer will always tell you we don't write the headlines. We just submit the story, and there's a guy that writes the headlines. Apparently, the guy that writes the headlines also the guy that writes the headlines that we goof on every day because they're so stupid, and uh, that's his way of getting back at us. All right, touche, dopey opie, dopey opie, you're a dope and pervy pal. Pervy. Pal. Oh, I'm just jacking you're off. The least down perverted the dude I know. I what know. happened? I don't what know the what fuck happened? I'm, I don't have a clue. What the fuck? Why? I don't Wait know. a minute. You're the pervy pal. I know. I, that's why we put, put commas. commas. We it's put dopey, commas. opie, and pervy pal. Yeah, we, we think they the might have forgot, forgot the, comma. the comma, but we know they didn't. Mm. I'm pervy pal. Yeah. Like when I'm walking down the street, my heavy coat underneath, I'm just jacking it. <laughs> just jacking. You do look like a pervert. I do when look like a pervert. it's 85 degrees out and you're walking around with a fucking, a, a two parka. hood, a yeah. parka hood <laughs> with the fur because you don't like want to be noticed. Old, a big coat and a black belt. 19, <laughs> 1975 snorkel jacket. <laughs> you're mittens and karate experts, sir. Oh my God, there he is. The pervert from the radio. It's the pervy pal. At least I'm a pal. <laughs> what? Ha oh, I got. Yeah, you got it. I'll just read it. Yeah. All right. So, what well, did you do this? And uh, some in Boston, some have in Boston. No, no, no. It's nothing bad. Looks kind it's of all good stuff. This. Oh, that's all that's good, good stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's all good. That's stuff. interesting. All right. I'm hey, uh, so what are you talking about? Oh, and, and what are you I messaging me? After after the 9/11 thing. Uh -huh. I started getting all type of warrior emails uh -oh. to safe. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> they start sending me email, email, uh, uh, what do you call it? Links to all type. And they were going, P Patrice, fucking fight hard, buddy. They were sending like this big dumb oh nigga. Oh my God. Info and shit. All right, I did get those text messages <laughs> on the way to Boston. Big, I mean, like, there's one guy, scientific, like, 
like they were sit scholars for 911, like uh-huh. not not kooks, like sci- this one guy, scientific fact. Talking about the way, just one thing. Talking about the way buildings, things come down on, uh, uh-huh. uh, 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 like dropping an egg. He said dropping an egg from the from the top of the World Trade Center would take eight seconds for the egg to hit the ground. Uh huh. That's, That's how that long it fun. took for the buildings to fall. Ready? He said even let's say if you go, the fact that it falls and it has to hit. Each floor and the pressure from each floor falling to the pressure of the, of the next floor giving way. Let's say it, it was 110 stories how you figured it out. Let's say or it fell from the 96th floor. So if you gave it a half a second, a half a second to to fall and then the pressure of the other floor to hold itself and then fall. Uh-huh. A half a second, it would have took 46 seconds for the fucking buildings to fall. That's science, nigga. No, it's not. Science. It, it, it wouldn't have took in eight seconds for the fucking buildings to fall. Why would each one get a half second if the weight, the additional weight falling on each one is additional, additional, additional? Yes. Why a half second? Why wouldn't it they, go faster? Because they wasn't even given in a second. They would, they, a second was good. Not only that. A second that's, isn't good in that, that is That is implying that it fell one floor at a time. When it started coming down, there were multiple floors smashing at the same time. Multiple you put, floors coming down, giving resistance. This right. A, he said if you drop an egg off the top of the fucking building without resistance, yeah, it would take eight seconds. Eight seconds. A fucking building that was made out of steel and, a, and, and that it fell in what he said, its own footprint, which means it fell straight fucking down as opposed to... It w- falling it's down. A funny it, little thing called it, gravity, it, and it no, pulls straight down. No. But, but you're you're talking like as if one floor hit the the next floor, yes. and then and then now it's two floors, yes, and then and then it's three floors, yes. And it, when it fell, ten floors at a clip were just smashing. But it's still the resistance from the other floors resist the resistance if it was if it was a, a half of a half did a second explain it how... would still be 20 seconds okay okay it fell in 8 then, seconds that's then did he explain second. how oh, it was <laughs> propelled downward faster than gravity cuz even no, a controlled... it's no, it, there's no such thing as faster than gravity so how how so was what, it then so what does how this did prove? it fall fa- how does it, what does it prove that what, there were rocket oh, that no. there were rocket engines that there was, pushing that it down that it was demolished Professionally, wouldn't it no. still have to fall? The speed of gravity. I mean, it, it, it would still. It, no, that because that's what it, it was pulverized. The 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 cement that help that's in the middle of each floor with the steel what was pulverized by explosive. By explosive. That was planted. That's how fast. So now not a, a only demo, a demolished building will fall. So you're, not only were the no. explosive put in the beams that support it, but we had to go around in cubicles yeah. and drill in the cement floors around where people were working and plant explosives. Yes. Anthony, there, wow, there this was gets secure. better and better. Yes, could could, could <laughs> yes. you move your facts? <laughs> Are not open. <laughs> the buildings are not open 25 hours a day. Let's just label it D5 <laughs> instead of C4. That'll confuse the shit out of them. The, the, the security guards right, said, listen, no, listen, I, listen, man, people were sending me all type of shit and I was watching it. Shit, shit is a good word well, for it. Whatever you got <laughs> I cannot. This is scholars for not people. Listen. Accredited motherfuckers from MIT believe that these buildings was dem- dem- and, and I got another email about the same type of thing, and they're just stealing JFK lingo. Now the one guy goes, NORAD was told to stand down. Stand was down. Was it really Sutherland speech in JFK? Whoever sent me that email, shut your teenage face. Shut it. Take us DEFCON one. Let's go to Tim on Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you sack on piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, Tim. Get in here. Hey, uh, did want to call about Patrice's theory here. There's yeah. a problem. It's not mine, talking... nigga. I'm just copying what I heard. This is, not, this is a white uh, man's Patrice, theory. Patrice is not a I'm thinker. He's copy paste. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm just repeating what pretty another much, motherfucker said. Hold on, but pretty much all of yeah. America is copy sure. paste. Copy paste. Yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, yeah. let, me, let me say something. You go read a few of those political even, books. Even you even feel your, like you're an expert. Exactly. Even your disagreements are copy paste, motherfucker. So don't forget that shit. Hold on, sir. Let Let me say something about Patrice because after 9/11, no one was fucking louder at the comedy cellar table. 
with the chalk, doing the fucking all the numbers, add up to eleven. You remember I believe, that? That shit. Is, I know you believe yeah, it. I didn't and you say did a lie. Too. I didn't say I didn't either. Don't make me an asshole. I believe. I believed it until September thirteenth. You this fucking <laughs> idiot until oh five. It's all right. Nine plus two. Yes. Oh, good point. All, nine plus, you remember all those numbers. What's nine plus two. <laughs> eleven. They, all the no, all the, the numbers num that that added up. Oh, yeah. Nine eleven. It was like every number you did that the dates added up. To 9/11, I, I forgot it was fucking five years ago. But you do it, understand that the, the craziest people in the world have these number things that. But they there do. were also <laughs> it, there were also facts that were wrong in that equation. Like there was, they, they listed the wrong number of passengers. Yeah. Like it was like you know when you look at 9/11, well uh, it's a nine plus two ones nine. 10, 11. Uh, uh, like all, flight 11, flight, flight 11, uh, 93, 92. Yeah, which would be 12. No, flight 93, I what, think it is. But what's that's the same thing? Like flight something 93? I, I don't know. The three flight 93 oh. to represent okay. nothing. Exactly. And then the flight 11. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a 9, but when you turn the 3 this way, it looks like tits. And there's two tits, so that's 9 and plus the building, 11. And the buildings were 11. It was a... It was a but all he right. believed that shit, too, man. You still... You it believe was, isn't it hard to build two buildings in the shape of an 18? <laughs> it's very interesting. Convenient for the fucking elevators. I, I saw I saw a twenty seven building in Chicago. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> science man. This is what. Uh, hey, this yes, is what, hey. yes. Go this, Tim. The, the problem with the collapse is you're talking like each floor is is a structural entity unto itself. It's not. The floors are actually suspended from the outer skin of the building. Mm -hmm. So once that building starts collapsing, those floors have no strength at all. They they're providing. Yeah, no they're not waiting. Like but you, how fast did the they're building fall? They're not waiting a half a eight, second. Eight in, seconds or something. Or not eight, eight seconds. seconds. Yeah. They're not That's waiting. That's how fast it fell. They're not waiting yeah. at all, man. Yeah, that, that's I'm just not, going I right through. I have a special which I saw. I'm not to interrupt you, Tim, but I have a special that I saw, which I have on TV, DVD somewhere, of why the buildings fell the way they did. I saw that same fucking. It had special. something to do with the way that they were linked. They, they should have been. They should have been. The stir. The floor should have been hung in a sturdier fashion. Why didn't the upper part, when the building started collapsing, the mm -hmm. upper part above where the plane hit, did not explode? There were no. Explosions. It didn't collapse until that thing came down and hit the ground. So how do they know where so, to plant the explosives? Yeah. Where how, what, what, exactly? Who's to say that the explosives they they planted it all through the building? And who's to say that those explosives they didn't know how to set off the explosives where they need to Who set them off? Doing Let me ask you a If they were going to go through name Aaron. if they were going to go through all this, <laughs> if they were going to go through all that, wouldn't they have just like now they're saying that like the guys are alive, like the 9/11 guys are alive? Wouldn't they have just picked guys who something. were dead? Let me tell you right. how much you you Pick infested his mind. Yeah, he believes it. But it's something. There's some. There's some little blockage of reasoning that makes mm -hmm. him not completely believe it. He, he's, not true. He's being a devil's advocate. So no, speak, I don't buy it. He believes it. I don't Norton buy it. Norton believes it I in, read... his, in his gut because no. being a comic, you have to have this kind of cynicism don't... towards the government. He knows yeah. cynicism is one thing, right. but but something that like, if you said to me there was a rogue element in the government, like allegedly in World War II, and somebody knew that that was going to happen and stood back and let it happen, maybe a couple of that. That's right. I believe you're talking about implosions and 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 and, and then bringing the buildings the elaborate down. Elaborate plan. And, and Mohammed Atta, uh, you know, not being alive. alive somewhere, and he's living in Ronkonkoma, you know. But he's he's walking okay. around going, "I'm Mohammed Atta." And they're going, "No, you're dead." Shh. Okay. <laughs> 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 he loves me, and I'm a comic. Wow, he's from Jersey. He knows. <laughs> you, you fucking know. I, I really don't. I, I actually look. No. I asked for credible. I said, "Please," because me and Tim Young were talking. Tim's a comedian, and when Tim goes, "Well," you know. WTC7, when he said WTC7, uh, you had to hit could, him in the face. If he couldn't beat me to death, I would have hit him. <laughs> but he oh, could. Tim, yeah. Oh, Tim's a psycho and he could really hurt me, so I just kind of nodded oh, and went, that sounds good. Let's go to Joe the Trucker. Joe, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Hey, let's go, Joe. You got to get right okay. in today. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, hey, uh, there was a little bit of difference between a concrete floor and an egg. The terminal, terminal velocity is totally different. Right? Yeah, so I said. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, let's well, go to I, I don't think he got your comparison. I, well, let's let's go to Mark. Yeah. Astrophysics proves Patrice wrong. Mark. All right. Uh, uh, guys, it's, I, I don't know what kind of physics it is, but when each floor starts falling, it exponentially will fall with more and more pressure. I said that. Yes. So, so but, there's no way that it, it would take you. It was milliseconds that yeah. the, the each It wouldn't floor, take you, you started this argument by saying, you know, a second per floor. No, this is a half a, a half a second. But there's this no is, way it's going to be a half a second This is incredible. Can I get floor. a fucking. This, this is the problem with the show. 
Do any physicists listen to this motherfucker? We have a lot of them. Is there a physicist call it. in? I live in my building is one of the greatest fucking, honest to God, one of the greatest uh, 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 theoretical physicists in the world. Did lives you in ask my building. That question? Why would I? Hi, you don't know me. Who do you think killed everyone in the World Trade Center? Maybe you can't ask a fucking physicist. You ask transvestites. Trans -trans 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 <laughs> no, I things. don't. I close my eyes and enjoy. No one knows nothing. Wait, I don't ask that to be a Another gay. thing while my brain is like... The uh, on no that one thing. knows while nothing. Going. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 forensic study of the of the of the fucking oh my Im God. immediately this is what i remember from just watching this new shit i'm watching uh -huh. e immediately hold wait a on minute. let him talk e goddamn it e immediately they came in and took away the fucking evidence of the buildings fall the physical evidence of the buildings fall now now they were looking for bodies. wait a minute T no hold man on, hold on let him twa the twa flight right they dug fucking plane debris out of the ocean to put that fucking plane back together right. to see what the fuck happened. Uh -huh. They did not see what happened yes, to the did. World Trade uh, Center. Everyone saw it. Plane I think everybody everyone saw, saw it. it, but no, they did not do a, a what made the fucking the material. They did not study the material. They the took the problem. fucking here's building the, away. Here's the problem with that. If you recall, mm -hmm. there was a fucking frantic rescue I going you said. on. He said no. The people wanted to rescue. They, had to they rescue actually, people. For, for a couple of days, if you remember, they thought they might actually dig some poor son of a bitch out of that mess. So they brought in cranes and just started pulling shit out of there. And where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put it? Broadway? We well, can't reconstruct it right now. They had to fucking <laughs> put it, it out of there. there. And That's another the thing, <laughs> there's no, when a plane blows up in the air and goes in the water, right. believe it or not, it's a lot easier to pick the pieces up and put them together than it is when it hits something at 500 miles an hour and ends up uh, little specks of, of pretty much nothing. Did you see footage of that plane vaporizing when it hit the brick wall? They said, oh, it would, never would have vaporized. And, I, and that's the question I asked. Why did it vaporize when it hit the Pentagon? And then someone sent me a link to a military test that had been done about nuclear reactors. They wanted to see if it could withstand a plane crash. So they show a concrete being hit by a plane, and there's no resistance dust. to the concrete. All it that, was like the, the plane, plane didn't exist. turned into dust. It was a perfect hole in the side of yeah. the Pentagon. A yeah. perfect round They said what the holes you're hole. seeing pictures of inside now, were, were done in, during being, the rescue effort. That saying, was not the they're hole. They're saying the plane. That you hit are the being misled, my brother. You really are. But by, by who? By the Jews. Okay. <laughs> the one, the one group I well, agree with. <laughs> hey, here's a guy that worked in the World Trade Center. Let's see if there was any action going on while he was trying to do his job. Billy, what's up? Hey, boys, what's going on? Hey. Uh, I was Patrice, man. I'm I'm a cynic just as much as the next guy, and right. always into this government is doing this and that. But right. man, you you got it. You're taking it a little bit too far. I'm, yeah. I'm just repeating I'm, what I'm fucking white people say. The I'm awful repeating, white people. I'm repeating everything oh, I heard from, from, Billy Cox. Cox. from white ahead, teenagers. I'm, I'm up on the 65th floor of the uh, Empire State Building, and during 9/11, we watched the whole thing. The first plane went by the building, went right down Fifth Avenue, shook shit off the shelves in my office. Yeah, because it was doing about hit. 500. And it was a complete mess. And you know what? I guess, you know, some people want to be able to point the finger. You know, they want to have some concrete evidence that, There's you know, it's this person's point. fault. And, you know. There's plenty of fingers to point. I, look, I'm not in disagree. I was as, as salty as I I'm still salty. Right. But I'm saying, I'm not saying that it, it, it's a complete. I'm saying something. You're you getting, can't say that it's just Trish, completely an accident. You're getting. No, it wasn't. Like the Poseidon Adventure. Just, it's not an accident. Wave. It you was know? Arabs that well, don't an, like an, us. An accident, you know what I mean? An accident killing us. that the government, would, you know, that it that is starting to point towards more than just yeah. Arabs they, doing they funny this, shit. Who, Look, who blew up the trains in Spain? Arabs. I believe who, that. Who, but, who, but who listen, blows up the friggin' barracks? But they're able to do if, this. Who's hijacked if, planes over the if years? They, if, listen, that's what, what I'm saying is I believe it because I, I just believe it. There's no other point for I'm only watching these things that are, that other people are doing work and raising questions. Everybody here is doing the same thing. They're made with an agenda. You're, you're the making a decision on what to, what to believe. But the things you're watching are made 
created with this agenda. They they twist things around right. and and then present them to you in a twisted, inaccurate but they don't, fashion. They don't do that in that in, little they hole. They don't do in that the, in the other side, like your side of the thing. This no, because I'm not be looking. At, I'm not looking at some package that's presented as look at the conspiracy. Here it is. I made it. Uh, view this. I'm looking at things like here is file footage. From different news agencies of photographs of the Pentagon. It's not one footage. little hole in the Pentagon. It's a, it's a, no, it's hole, not. a perfect hole. All right, in listen. The... I'll punch it up later after the show. I will show you the real pictures of the Pentagon. All Look, right. And listen. you will see wing marks, engine marks, everything. I, I like this is what we should do. I was, I was talking to Patrice about this. We should do a 9-11 show. I'm we'll doing it on I, a Saturday. I don't know if... Are you into this? I'd be into it, absolutely. All right, here's the deal. It's uh, Anthony picks a team, Patrice picks a team. I pick, you, you, I pick you need white some, people. I'm going to find me some No, you need some, you need some backers. Tim Young is a big conspiracy guy. I'll get Tim Young. I need... No, here's the deal. We'll, we'll give it a couple weeks to develop, but basically, it's Anthony obviously doesn't believe what, what you're saying, and, and let's uh, do a couple hours I'll and bring see what in happens. my blueprints and everything. You get to study for a couple weeks. You Charts get to bring in other people. I think you'd be a reasonable person. And, like, Anthony, who would you bring in? <laughs> would, you, would you keep Jimmy? You gotta, uh, you no, gotta, Jimmy's no, a half a traitor. Yeah, Jimmy, no. Jimmy doesn't believe in it, really. That's Jimmy not true. Be turned. Jimmy actually li reads facts, and I, I raise questions. I say, well, there were certain things that were interesting points raised by conspiracy people. Yeah. I said, that Pentagon, the, the questions they raised were interesting. When I was presented with the facts, and uh, the, both sides... Okay, now I understand why I believe a plane hit the Pentagon, but I wanted to have, like, there were certain questions that were raised that I didn't like. I don't like the fact that there's no photos uh, of it happening and there's no video. I think it does exist. I think they're protecting us from it, but I don't think it's because it wasn't a plane. I will they would bring show in things. that. On I'm, that day, I'm Anthony have Dr. Dr. Kaku documented show. evidence. You better get your in. shit together for doing this. I will bring in pictures, this is the guy that, charts, that reads graphs, blueprints. <laughs> An actual. When was witnesses. the last time you read a blueprint, Patrice? Uh, I read a blueprint on my uh, sneaker collection. You never read a blueprint. I uh, uh, had, had blue balls one day. <laughs> here's, a blue, here's a blueprint he would read. It's a girl lying on the bed looking for love, and the blueprint is his hand jerking off on her. And then there's a blueprint of the door, him opening it and closing it and leaving her. When did this piece of shit motherfucker become like the, the, the I have, reason? Yeah. I, I happen to be. This, this, no, this is what I'm saying. He's the dirtiest hunk of shit ever, and and he will he will just sit there and just explain me jerking off. But but I told him that. Do you understand? Yeah. But he'll repeat. He'll just repeat. Well, at least I'm not uh, saying it's science. Minute, he'll repeat something I might have. I told him that could have been exaggerated, but I'm saying he's repeating. He's re just like he. You're, you saw a blueprint. You're just saying, oh well, this blueprint is this, but you you you're discrediting. Other other stuff that's just as credible, the hole in the side of the building. Mm. Why is your picture the picture? The picture I saw is the is some imaginary horse shit I, that they made up. Because I will also use your picture as one of the pictures that show uh -huh. a bigger picture. Yeah. You're looking at one little narrow <laughs> yeah. piece He's of information. Man. You know? And if 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 you zoomed in on that wall right there, right. you would see a wall full of naked women. Mm -hmm. And now if you presented that picture to somebody and said, what type of room was this taken in? There'd be speculation that it could be anything. Theoretic. It could be it could be a, a Playboy shoot room. It could be a fucking porno guy's fucking thing. It could be a guy's bedroom, a teenage boy's bedroom. You pull back here and take it. You know it's a radio studio. I'm saying you're looking at a narrow piece of information. I'm looking at four different angles of of the site. Mm -hmm. The the angles that the, uh, there was another fucking thing on that. The way the plane would have had to to crash. It did. It it the the plane would have to go like this. The way the plane crashed. It, it's like it was driven into the side. That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's improbable. That's the word. Improbable. Impro is, improbable. It's why probably a one in a million shot that that guy hit the Pentagon. Why crash like a that? plane then? And why not just have a shoulder launcher? Why not fire a missile? Like why? If, if if you and I, if you're saying this, mm -hmm. and I can hear you saying it, then why wouldn't people who are brilliant enough to plan this make such basic errors? Like why would you put a missile hole and say it was a 767? They don't of believe. Just saying, they believe that we're dumb. That they believe this. Country to be no, stupid. Not the way information no, is passed. No. This is not JFK. Even JFK, 
the conspiracy became kind of like, oh, geez, that doesn't look good. And that was in the 60s when they had video cameras. There was five videotapes taken in 63. Everything's videotaped now. They're going to fire a missile at a building and say it was a plane and not think that anyone's going to... Not think that somebody might have a video camera Are or... Are conspiracy the, yeah. theories that you believe in wholeheartedly? Uh, I, be uh, JF I believe JFK... I believe a lot of the conspiracy theorists are wrong, but I do think that there was definitely not just Oswald. Yes, that one I definitely UFO, think. UFO, believe in UFO conspiracy. conspiracies. Yes, yes, but, but I mean, not as far as they present. I believe UFO conspiracies. Not that there are any or there are aliens, but I do believe that the government uh, kept information from yes. the people on things that they were working on. Like, like nuclear, like nuclear bombs and shit. I believe. Uh, that they, and and they, like, like weird powered devices that kind of looked like flying saucers in the desert. Right. When people would see that, and then the government would be like, "We had nothing oh, flying yeah, in that yeah. area." It's like bullshit. That was one that's, of yours. That start to talk because they yeah. don't want to admit that they got yeah. some stuff in the air. Although right. pilot testimony convinces me, though, when you have pilots saying, "Look, this thing," we have. Ra I've heard radar stuff saying. We 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 you, we, you have a uh, like a craft going up. It's just going like you know 400 miles an hour, and then it just goes up. And it goes like 800 miles an hour straight up. I, I've heard like pilot transmissions and yeah. like radar trans. That That's type odd. of stuff is so convincing. You believe, it, you believe in UFOs? Uh, to a certain degree, yeah. Like, and they I, were I, here. UFO is nothing but an unidentified flying object. But if you believe in Holy UFOs, Captain specific. But that's you, different. Man. UFO could be anything. <laughs> if you're you saying in that flying that saucers or aliens, from outer aliens you in are aliens visiting, I, I definitely believe in aliens. Yeah. You believe they were here, I, flying around, and they and we caught them, and they were in 51. I don't know if we caught them. They probably crashed. No one knows. What do you believe? I don't think. I can't imagine we're the only thing, you know, out there. I believe. I don't I think they've that been, we're not the I don't only think living organism out there, but I don't believe that there's think been aliens here. flying around this planet. No. Carl Sagan didn't believe it either. I don't think they've been here. Yeah, he, he said was... that the distances were too great, that they exist, of course, but it was just too far to come. It could be some incomprehensible way that they can get here. Wormholes. Well, but, yeah, of course, the wormholes. Psycho, yeah. A psychopath said, yeah. that a, a, a known crazy man was said the most believable way that you could travel at at this speed is if you learn how to manipulate magnetism and the magnetic poles between each planet if you if you can learn how to manipulate that and be sucked in between the magnetism of each planet that yeah. you could travel that fast mm, that is kind of crazy there are theoretical that physicists kind of crazy that say that there's a way to make something happen in two different places at once like you know well, if you're traveling faster than the speed of light, Dr. Kaku and I discuss it sometimes in the oh, elevator. Oh, really? <laughs> like, like I'll walk in. One time, I freak because I'm a fan of his. Because I used to hear him on Art Bell. He's he's a disgustingly brilliant genius. And I mm. saw him, and I was really starstruck. And I, I he was at the desk, getting ready to walk towards the elevator. I go, "Hi, Dr. Kaku," and I started to walk, and he actually doubled back and almost went to the <laughs> other elevator. I creeped him out in my own. No, no, oh. no. It bothered me about the good doctor because you uh, pointed him out to oh, me yeah, one yeah, day. Yeah. And I was walking home, and I actually saw him, and I started freaking out, and I was starstruck because I'm like, that guy is smarter than pretty much anyone on this planet. What is he known for? What is he He's a for? theoretical physicist. He's like, these guys are the ones that go beyond what physics do, and they theorize, like Stephen Hawking's. He yeah. theorized right, about right. black holes before I had any proof of them. He's got some shit. And uh, there he is on the streets of Manhattan taking a little bike taxi. He was being filmed for something, though. They were filming. Oh, That's why I didn't go over and go and discuss them. Oh, by the way, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't see the camera because I was just thinking, That's a little strange. I, if I was that brilliant, I don't think I would be, you know, taking bike taxi, bike for, taxi. for enjoyment. Why I, is no one that backs me on this what, calling? I did ask, by the way, your gravity question. I confirmed with him that I was wrong. Because we control the show. Oh, you really? Yes. Let somebody... We control the show. Let somebody on who backs me, asshole. You dopey. We, we had a guy <laughs> that... Dopey, dopey. Dopey, dopey and pervy... <laughs> perv, perv, pervy pal. pal. Let a motherfucker who, who believes me answer. Listen, this is what's going to happen, though, seriously. In about Son two weeks, bitch. two weeks, we're going to do a 9-11 show because this is getting old. we got to settle it uh, once and for all. Yes. It's Anthony versus Patrice. Anthony mm -hmm. gets one or two guys, you get one or two guys, and then we'll have at it for two hours straight right. on this we'll fine go channel. At it, presenting facts, maybe People in a are already debate, betting. A and it'll never get fashion. old, by the way. We're still not, talking no. about fucking JFK. No. Oh, I know. I know what you mean, though. But people are betting already, and st uh, the early bets are in Arn for Anthony. Anthony. Well, Fuck him. I'm going to... You know what? You I've, got I've been, nothing. I've been... Uh, leisurely into this year, son of a bitch. And I, be, I just now believe you're going to tell. Now I'm going to get blueprints. Good. You know, there's nothing wrong with everyone being educated. And we want you to wear a suit that day. <laughs> That's oh, right. Wow. And, we want, and we want you to come in with a briefcase, <laughs> a shark skin suit. I know, <laughs> sky blue. I'm going to have a. As long as that motherfucker has the Phillies on the front. <laughs> I, I'm going to have a PowerPoint have... presentation. <laughs> and you better have some charts. 
charts and graphs. We want graphs and charts. We're and gonna you have believe this on it, too. Talks. That's the sad thing. Over what, 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 you what, believe what? in the 9-11 conspiracy show. No, I, I, I'm not sure what the government knew. There's, you're not completely But as like far as the it. event that happened on 9-11, it happened exactly I, how I saw it on TV. It's pretty clean cut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What enough, they knew. I, I don't quite, know why I, you're not letting the physicists call in today. What Bush knew and all that, I question a lot of that stuff. Absolutely. But that's, manipulation. That, but that's different the, than saying the event didn't happen how we saw it. I didn't say the event didn't happen. Oh, I, know I wonder I, how we, you saw it. I just think I do wonder if we could have prevented it. I wonder if we could have. I don't know. Those questions, man. I just, I just the the questions that were raised and and the, and the, the fact that there's a couple of non like kooks that are fucking saying, look, there's some credible guys making lectures that fucking work at at, at institutions of higher knowledge you, you know, that son, are saying this shit. I've seen them, and I've seen the same type of people, very intelligent engineers. Talk about how we never landed on the moon and, either. And, can I ask? And, and they're, they're intelligent people. Some of them, uh, uh, like I said, engineers. The and architect of the building said he but, couldn't but, fall like that. Oh, but, well. But here's the, the architect. Other, here's, here's the other thing. A piece of shit. Here's the other thing. Did the buildings need to fall? Uh, for the for them to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. Well, everything. I think when uh, pl two planes hit the hit the twin towers, job done. Well, they're saying that Jude. They got done the exactly. To do with it. But they got they got you know they got they got they're done exactly what they Jude wanted. The trees, they would have had to demolish. Them. Why wouldn't they just do this? Let the planes hit and then demolish them. You'd have to demolish them anyway. Right. They wouldn't you? You could start building up from where. Uh, where, where it is. How would you get? Th no way. How no they get that way. high anyway? Now that, you, you don't think they could build. Is there, okay, those, ready? Out of any construction workers who could have, if, if, no, 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 no. if the buildings didn't fall, could you have at a construction company? Could you rebuild where the plane fucking they absolutely sure. would have demolished them. They would have demolished, demolished, demolished them. them. They would have. If those buildings had like from the 76th floor up, yeah. God, why go through? This all is all a guesstimation. No, it's not because they would have been worried about the uh, the, the problem. Why go? How do you know? Oh, man. Yeah, they're, they're, they sorry. are smart people who are doing lectures on the lecture circuit. Uh huh. So the plane they work at institutes of higher learning. So the planes hit. They did what they had to, you know. They did what they wanted to do. I mean, to actually right. make sure the uh, the buildings came down. That that you know, what does that do at that point? Hey, Patrice, are you willing to believe that it was the regardless of who did what and stuff that it was Mohammed Atta and terrorists that flew into that plane? Yes, but here's why I'm saying yes. Okay. I believe it to be so, mm -hmm. but. There are fucking look. It, I'm what? about as I'm. I'm. In I terms just want to because I had a follow up my, on in that. In terms of my own like <laughs> investigation, yeah. When a motherfucker just raises a question, right? Like we were all the day after it happened was like destroy whoever you have to destroy. Uh -huh. You know, we just were emotional just to yeah. watch that happen. But I'm saying now it's five years later. Questions are being raised, and and the fact that somebody would go, okay. Some of these guys might be still be alive, okay? Some of them mm -hmm. might still be alive. Mm -hmm. It's just a question that you that goes in your head like, there's no point for me to... First of all, there's really no point to be against Bush at this point. He's gone in two fucking years. Yeah, I know. He's done. So there's real no, really no point to ever fucking really be on him this hard. But I'm saying when somebody says that, I didn't do my own investigating like, damn, I thought I saw a motherfucker driving a cab that looked just like the 18th nigga. I'm <laughs> saying that... You raise that question, you just go, could that shit be, could that shit be true? That was why I asked on the air. That was why I asked on the air. That's why I asked on the air. What if the plane w didn't make it? What if he got lost, got shot down, then you have, and, and one, one of the buildings gets hit, let's say. One of the World Trade Center buildings gets hit, falls down. Now you got the other one standing there. The plane didn't ma fucking make it. Got, the guy got caught at the airport. It was shot down by the fucking military. Mm -hmm. Whatever. He ran out of fucking gas. I don't know. What would they then do with a World Trade Center loaded with fucking explosives now? What what do they do? Good question. You do know what the of... fuck do they do? Because you do know that one was supposed to be either the Capitol or the White House. Where are the explosives now, that were in there? Okay, one of them almost, here's a one super of the planes crazy. almost super... had a mid-air collision, too. When they were turning around from Boston, it was within a couple thousand feet or 200 feet of hitting another plane in flight. Yeah. So that one wouldn't have yeah. been the World Trade Center. That's right. What happened? Patrice is raising Where's his hand. Where's the explosives? Here's a possibility. Just to say, open your mind up. It could be <laughs> completely ridiculous. My mind is okay. aw, like a that, cougar snatch. The fact that they're, that they're, that they're blaming this Just chief, the, the, the like owner, it. whatever, Steen. Uh, Silverstein. Okay? Yeah. Say 
as an insurance thing. I think it's a disgrace, Wait first a of all, that Arabs do something and a Jew is taking the blame for it. It's a goddamn <laughs> disgrace. I don't know how they spun that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying possibly. Uh-huh. Possibly. All right. That in case of this type of disaster and you needed to bring these buildings down quickly, they built the buildings oh my. with... With oh, demolition equipment, oh, just in case, insurance-wise, you had to go, okay, this is, we got to bring them down right now. Wow. Get You're a 5 XL straight jacket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Get a 5 oh, XL wow. straight I'm just jacket. I'm something out there. My man, Patrice. I'm just throwing something out there that they could Two put. Two words. <laughs> Oxham's Razor. <laughs> what? Two words for you, Patrice. A five X Cam's razor. Ah, Cam's razor. What the fuck is that? Oh my god. That's what I do now. Patrice raises a good point though. I call Ah Cam's razor. What is that? It's a question. <laughs> what is that? O C C A M S razor. Oh shit. I'm just saying. I'm just I don't throwing know it out there. Well, tell Patrice this. Two words, Occam's razor. I know Professor Anthony knows this term, but here you go anyways. The simplest answer is usually the truth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've heard that, but not put in those terms. All right. Well, we'll have a, a show. What is it, two-hour show, you thinking? I'm thinking 10 minutes. I, 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 know, I was just thinking, what are we going to do with the other hour and 55 <laughs> minutes? It's going to be like it's going to be like Little League. And he's gonna be ahead by twenty runs. Oh, We're gonna have to call crazy. the game. I'm just crazy. saying that <laughs> that you you gotta. You're in deep trouble. Who, who, really, who, who are you bringing to the table with you, Patrice? Who the fuck knows? I never got into the, any of these, these fucking. You have no idea who you're dealing with. I do. He's I'm not gonna be I'm on not your team. Of this he, know, he knows me uh, every day. He knows me he more and more. He read the report. I'm not scared of this. How bird. many pages in the report, Anthony? Oh my God. Hundreds. There was Hundreds. About, there was How many about, pages did you read in the report? I read what somebody else read and repeated copy what they and thought. Paste. <laughs> Patrice, copy, copy and paste. Copy and paste. Wait, oh, wait a minute. You <laughs> fucking read... The 9-11 report. Understand my, he my read the entire report. report. Understand my, con my, uh -huh. con my context here. Uh -huh. You went you're to a only, shop and got some facts together. You're only repeating what you're told. Yes. But you're only repeating certain information that you, See, you were told. I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let right. you get, so? I'm not gonna let you get away with that. Not only does my pal Anthony read the report, then he studies up on it and starts pulling out blueprints. See, and stuff. now you gotta go read the report and now you gotta back it up with other sources. Then my pal Anthony said, goes, This looks interesting, but you know what? I wanna find out for myself. So I'm gonna find a blueprint of a I'm going to the Boeing fifty seven and, and I'm gonna see what the, this piece is and look for it. Engine and it matched. What the, did you uh, hear? Do. Did you hear? Okay. What did you do? Did you hear about the fact that they found the guy's fucking passport? Passport. Right, yes. Okay. Right. I'm just asking. Uh huh. All right. Who? Who's the? The fact that they would say that, right? Yeah. You can either you do two things. You either believe it, or you don't believe it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is this is this? These questions are are like up for debate. Now, only thing I'm saying is that some of these these scientists are saying. That scientifically, some of this shit is not is not uh, credible. What that what that report you okay. read is not credible fr from scientific basis. You so don't I'm just think saying, it's I could feasible. You don't think it's feasible, possible that a guy that is most definitely in the front of the fucking plane, and all the passengers were told to get to the fucking back of the plane, behind the fuel, mm -hmm. and the guy is in the cockpit. In the front of the plane, as it smashes into the building, and he is torn to shreds. You don't think and his, his passport, passport came out can of go front flying somewhere and, and end up on a street somewhere? Could it, are the it, odds it, okay, that it's, it's going to? Is it probable? Is it is it probable? probable? No. It's so is unlikely it that they have made it up. It's so unlikely right. that you wouldn't make it up. You wouldn't. You wouldn't in, in an explosion. Impossible. You wouldn't leave a it's passport in the street. It's improbable. And yes, the whole conspiracy you're spouting is improbable. Is it impossible? It could be improbable. No. You it know could something? Be they could have put, put the explosion. It's so improbable that you would take <laughs> the less improbable thing and say, That's this right. is more probable. Hey, Tony, uh, Tony could help out, uh, Patrice. Tony All in right. St. Louis, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. What about that twenty dollar bill that you folded up and one side was the Pentagon and the other side was the towers? I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Oh, when you fold the twenty. Let, I knew you was gonna let that type of person. I, this probably, Who actually did that trick? Stephen Hawkins is you probably on the line right you now. You told me to help you out. He, I helped you no, out. He put he, the guy. You fold up the twenty. <laughs> And it's and it looks like a fire, like the bushes. Yeah, right. And if you put it together, look like the world trade on fire. That's that's what he let through. He's not oh, letting. Shit. He's not letting credible fucking people on the line. I certainly did. I certainly did. But that's why this guy laughed at himself. I Do you know did. if you also folded a certain way, you can make it a bow tie, and then you can blame the Nation of Islam for that's doing right. it. <laughs> I certainly did. The next caller is going to tell Patrice that nine plus three equals twelve. No, 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 no. It's, I, anyway, here's a here's a good question that we had. That, but this is why my mind, my mind just works it, crazy. It right. doesn't. How work. would you're you? You're gullible. How would you? You're gullible too. You fucking piece but of shit. But at least you admit you are. Um, did, how would you? If you could go back in time. <laughs> yeah. Now we need time machines. You know, I'm just saying. It's, and you think time machines possibly could be? We got be, a cabinet. We no. can turn that into a time machine. I don't think time either. travel ever, ever. ever. By the way, ever. you're wrong. It will be. And, and, and Dr. Kaku will explain that. It's about if you travel fast enough, yes, it is. And you, you can go can, further in time. You can, you, we, we, you can see into the past. Well, you that's what I'm saying. When, you're you're looking at a, when, you look, when you're looking at a light, right, the light from a star, but you're, not, you're seeing a million but, years in the, in the yeah, past. Yeah, but you're not but, seeing an actual... Some substance you can touch anymore. You're seeing an image. We, we're not eight. We can't see that yet. We can't do that yet. But eventually, they do think it's possible. And, and this yeah. is theoretical physics. Does think that's mirrors. possible? It has something to do with mirrors. Um, and you're laughing at me. And in certain way, like, I thought you was being funny. I'm not stupid all the time. I, I thought you was being an ass. Some mirrors. You, you have, how? No. I can't believe that he actually just bought. Th I'm a good actor. I made right, that up completely. Many, if you traveled away from <laughs> Earth <laughs> faster than the speed of light, right. as you look back on Earth, you would see time going backwards. And you also you age differently yeah. when you travel the speed of light. But you would see it. It's not actually yeah, happening. Yeah, we learned that in the planet it's what of the you age. see. Now let me ask you: If you could go, if you could go, back. no, it did because we learned that in Planet of the Apes. No, remember, like that's great. Let me put that in my footnotes. Source: yes. Planet of the Apes. Ah, remember the scene where like uh, it wasn't Charlton Heston, right? Damn. They used the other guy, and he was okay. And then he checked on his fellow astronauts, and and there was a there was a crack in their thing. a leak in her. She was supposed to be our Eve. <laughs> Damn you! So that so those you <laughs> cut out his brain, you bloody baboon. So they ended up aging. Remember? Right, yeah, the one person, yeah, the one, uh, the chick. one person. It was a, she was, it was supposed, supposed to be, be the chick that was going to bang the three guys and make a new civilization. There you go, see? Taylor. Well, that proves it. <laughs> that proves what, everything. You're a hypothetical thinker, right? Uh, you're a hypothetical why only one chick would they send, though? What if she had bad genes and the kid came out with Down syndrome? They're like, oh. oh now they're stuck on a planet. A whole, of planet, <laughs> whole planet full of these things. <laughs> no, then back then they used to just send Raquel Welch. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that bitch. Just something hot. Sophia Loren or Raquel Welch. <laughs> first, thing you, first thing you do is open a big hat factory. <laughs> <laughs> they just throw them on a spaceship oh, with oh, all that wasted oh, headroom. Oh, oh, actually use the, the hats that the apes were wearing. <laughs> you big that head. Big head. Well, <laughs> Wait, here's a quick question. How would yeah. you have stopped it? If you can go back in time, hypothetically, yeah. if you if we go send you back in time yeah. to, to 9, 10. Oh, wow, that's cutting it close. But how, okay. how could you, what would you have done to try to stop it? If you what had would the knowledge I have of what would have done happen? to stop to it? To try to stop okay. it. Okay, I would have called, first of all, I would have called in bomb threats on all the planes. That's the first thing you do. Say there's going to be a bomb on each of those planes. Automatically, plane grounded. Uh, I'd give the names. Automatically of who's grounded do now. It. Would that have been automatically grounded then? Yes. Automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bomb you call it bomb yeah. threat. They take very seriously. I'd have done that. Give out the names of uh, the terrorists mm -hmm. and say that these people, uh, you know, are are planning uh, to blow that. And it would it would mess up their whole uh, their whole scheme. They'd search them more. They'd look into their background a little more. Even based on, like, nothing, just a stupid... And go to the Statue of Liberty and scratch that nonsense off, and it would just say, <laughs> give us your white people. <laughs> but we're already there, though, right? It was I like Jimmy's idea. Well, yeah, it's not about black people. It's, <laughs> it's, it's more like, about them. Yeah, let's just black say, people have been upgraded to pass them. Yeah, you guys, we're yeah. not them anymore. Yeah, you, 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 you really got to get back to the white <laughs> Y'all have to you, you <laughs> yourself. You, you, you yeah. fuck asshole last bastion of white people. I saw you people uh, listen. Last bastion. The last bastion. It's over after us? Uh, after you is over. Dave in Jersey. Dave. Dave. I'm hearing. Dave. Dave. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, Dave. Um, I, I, I think that these conspiracy theories are impossible. I mean, all these firemen are sitting there sifting through the rubble. They don't find any remains of any sort of explosive devices. 
in the rubble, but they'll find body parts, they'll find computers, phones, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's impossible to have that many people involved in these theories and not have one person find something. Did you see the find Did you see the, the 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 clip of the firemen talking? And and the one dude was like, dude, it was a bunch of explosions, and that motherfucker came down like a professional yeah. demolition. Yeah, a fireman yeah. said that. What, what does the fireman know about? Really know what about the fuck? Did they know about all type of shit no like that? No one knows about the World Trade Center falling before it fell. No one knew about it. No one knew what it sounded like. People heard roars. They heard friggin' freight trains. But you, they just, heard you just discredit that statement that as ah, no, whatever. he probably did hear explosives. And he said the what, way it came was, down was, it? was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like that shit was not I was, falling. Anything it fell. is going to take the path of least resistance, which is straight down. Uh, on a uh, 90 degree angle to gravity. When can we take that's the, the path? When can we take the path to uh, a commercial break? <laughs> we could Good do that. Good segue, oh, good segue. Because <laughs> I got to take a path right to the urinal. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's lighten it up. Listen, fellas, <laughs> I'm saying that. I, whole I just was, break I just was excited about all the oh, new definitely. emails I got from my secret friends who won't call in. Mm -hmm. They're using their goddamn Negro you oh, guinea secret. pig to spew out the nonsense. White people really do know how to use black people for their own Did goddamn ill gotten game. Did, Where are you? Did you see a picture of the guy who's who's like the head of this thing? This ass. He wears a shirt that says 9/11 conspiracy. He's a 22-year-old boob. Yeah, but not, I'm not with. I'm not. No, with, but I mean that's I've the mentality you're dealing change, with. Boy, I've left loose. But Trace, this guy Jerome wants to help you out. Jerome, uh, here we go. What's going on, fellas? Hey, Jerome. All right. I'm not going to say anything new. I mean, I know just as much as all you guys. Then why are you calling? I'm a physicist. I want to try to help out the truth. Ah, a physicist. Uh, then where do you physicist? It sounds like we're physicists from Brooklyn Tech. Yeah. Hey, yeah. there, you fucking yeah. E equals yeah, MC I'm fucking from, square, yeah. nigga. Uh, I made a mistake. I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, I'm out. I I teach physicist ed at the high school. <laughs> <laughs> all right, physicist. Where did you go to your physicist school? Well, now now it's probably gonna get worse. More jokes. Small school out of out of Boston. Uh, it's called what? Curry College. Call what? I know Curry is on. It's well, on. Yeah. It's in Milton. Yeah, M it is. MIT a little too expensive, or the grades weren't uh, no, that no, good. No, Curry College is the Division Twelve of physicism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They actually spell physics with an F. Was, if they play Duke, Duke, they play Duke in the National Physicist. <laughs> <laughs> they would lose. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! They didn't have any scouts in there. No, there's no. <laughs> there weren't any scouts checking him out in and high school. The, the head coach is also the motherfucker that oh. cooks. He's the cook and the head coach. Of Over the front door, it says, "If man were meant to fly, he'd have wings." <laughs> 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 Oops. Curry College. That's what they. That's what you. That's what they. They're professional. They're in Curry. They cook chicken, goat. <laughs> you go there the, to eat. The physics of Indian cooking. This nigga from Curry College calls me. <laughs> to, to back up yeah, with the Curry fucking college. Uh, right, sir, what did you learn there that it will help out this conversation? Empathy. Hmm, that's tough. I mean. Oh, Anthony, I got I to gotta leave it all up to you, though, with all your arguments. I mean, that's all that we, we studied, you know, how, how yeah. things move in, in space. And, right. And exactly the, the points that are made with this, with the commission report. You're the are, dumbest are physicist I've ever heard in my life. Wait, what do you know, want me to wait a minute, wait a minute. Give, give him a break, say? too. Your boy is socially inept, too. People are really smart. Yes, but I'm not good socially. Let, give him a chance. First of all, he's on the fucking radio. First time in his life. Let him, let him get it out. Sir, explain right. inertia. Get right to the point. Let's see if he's a physicist. Explain inertia. Oh. Oh, that's good. You have a body, an object that's moving. There could be something inside of it. And if it turns left, that thing can turn left, too. No, now, somebody no, called. Is that correct? Very I don't easy. know what it means. <laughs> you don't even know. I knew you wouldn't even know The that. law that's of easy. inertia <laughs> is easy. An <laughs> object at rest will remain at rest unless... It is uh, influenced by an outside source, See, and an object in motion will remain in motion unless influenced. I don't by know who to believe. I, Curry College. Here's what it is. Or um, hey, it's Professor it's, Anthony. It's no. or, or new professor, <laughs> ex ex air conditioning man, new professor. <laughs> now fuck both of y'all. I don't believe in either one. Inertia is this is it's where inertia is the name of my no. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no inertia. It's where your dick is when you fuck Ursha. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Karnak, good one. <laughs> inertia. Jimmy held a little envelope up to his turban. Inertia. Inertia. Oh, let me... Hey. Close the envelope open. There's dew on your dippity. <laughs> 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 Two words. Schwag. May inertia rob your house tonight. Oh, inertia. Two words. Yes. Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> End of discussion. Is that Schrodinger's someone else fucking with you? I don't know. Schrodinger's cat is the, of course, the law of physics that <laughs> says. Right. All right, uh, Jerome, anything else? Well, I want to try to help out Patrice. I want him to say what what's something to, to an argument. What's an argument that he can't explain himself? The, it's the it's the whole the scientific fact of how the buildings fell, how fast they fell. Um, mm. the, the the thing I was watching, the guy said if you drop an egg from the, the the top of the building, it will take eight seconds to fall. But that's with no resistance, and the buildings fell in eight seconds, nine seconds with resistance. Who was timing the buildings falling? It is. It's probably fucking on film. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's watching. They just timed it. Is he trying to help me? Or what and the they fuck timed it. But still, like, it's. I mean, you, that's something that's not can we, oh, possible either. Goodbye. Can we at least yeah, get a guy yeah. from Paprika College? <laughs> <laughs> Paprika College. I know they're a step up. Hey, I need some all spice college how graduates. So, how, how about Mrs. Dash University, motherfucker? <laughs> this nigga called from. I'm telling you, Curry, Curry College is a college that's on the way to another college. <laughs> when you're driving, you know, that's Curry College. I'm on the way to another one. It's the dumbest college ever. <laughs> you went one building. It's physics oh, community uh, college. God, God damn it. <laughs> physics community college. <laughs> oh, God, this motherfucker with the shit. Uh, that dummy, I would rather hear Big A read out of a physics book. <laughs> of course. Let's go to Dave in North Carolina. <laughs> Dave's going to back up a trace. Hey. Hey. Um, I... I I've been in countries where they do rig buildings and bridges with bombs. And <laughs> yeah. also, I want to ask you, have you ever seen a fire burn downwards? A fire burn downwards? Yes. Yeah, instead of up? Yes. And it wouldn't make so much sense to drop a building at the lost cause anyways. A what? It would make so much sense to drop a building at the lost cause anyways. Shit. They can't put the fire out. They can't pull the plane out. You know? It would make more sense to drop the building. Yeah, so they had it rigged just in case. I got you. Just uh, in I'm case. I'm not sure if they had it rigged, they, but they I rigged. mean, they, I've been places where they do rig things like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it's easy to say they could go <clears> in there and put some C4 and drop it. Thank you very much. That's Patrice's constituency. <laughs> All right. There he is. Okay. There you go. That's the my guy. esteemed colleague. You're well, you might be right. If you rig a bully, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ever seen a fire burn down? Uh, yes, I have. You might be. I, whenever someone starts, I've been in countries. You haven't seen a fire burn down. Burn down. You, you might be a redneck. This is oh. awful. I'm just going to start to if say, If you fuck ever it. studied physics at Curry College, you, are, you might be an idiot. <laughs> See the chemistry between us? We finish each other's sentences oh, sometimes. Like, another minute, and that guy would have said, Did you notice there were no yarmulkes burned? <laughs> That's another thing. Some of the shit, it's like what you decide that you're going to... It's like, I go, when people go, there was no Jews in the... Mm -hmm. They were told the day before Trish. to take like, the day I'm like, off. All right. Trish, we, got, oh we got other things to do on the show today. So here's the deal. This yep. is what I say to you. Well, first of all, you're going to be on the radio Saturday night yeah, doing, yeah, doing your yeah. relationship show, yep. Yep. which is unbelievable. If you haven't heard Patrice doing his relationship show... Which, by the way, I great. just wouldn't even try to challenge you in that whole <laughs> fucking realm. Yeah, yeah, because that's where you're you, an expert, my friend. I've seen guys rattle off questions to Patrice off the top of their head, some obscure relationship question, and without blinking an eye or taking a second to think about it, his computer-like relationship head spits an answer out. You, like, in a second... It's like, oh, d yeah, it's... What, what, what are you talking about? You do blah, 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 this, that. And the guy's like like fascinated. Like he just climbed the mountain and Buddha was sitting up there and he got an answer from He's him. He's heading toward a weekly show with that because yep. it's, it's that strong. So it's going to be on Saturday night, uh, 8, 8 o'clock we decide? Yeah. 8 to 10. And this is what I, I say to you, Patrice. If you get a, a team behind you, we'll do uh, a 9-11 show. We'll I'm do a 9-11 show. I'm on it right now. A couple of weeks, we'll, uh, we'll get on the air and uh, do it with some... some 
proof and, uh, and we'll uh, all of our little the, you shit. Know, and we'll encourage everybody to call, people that agree with you and, and people that agree with Anthony. All right. And we'll do it the right way uh, once and for all. Okay? Fair enough. All right, we're going to go to break with the Patrice O'Neill bit. Ooh. Baby, it's cold outside. You're checking out the ONA program. Patrice O'Neill in studio. He's going to be uh, here all day tomorrow because little Jimmy Norton's playing some shows in Chicago. Chicago, you yeah. could say. You're going to leave in what, a half hour or so? No, I'm actually staying until 11. My flight's later. Oh, perfect. Hey, my flight's a little later, so I'm going to hang out a little bit longer on the program. You want me to shout it all over this fucking airport? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got Henry Rollins coming in, too. Yeah. Could be interesting. We've had uh, Henry on a couple of times. We yeah, had, we argued with him on the phone last time. Yeah, we, what was it about? He was like, uh, he was talking down to us about Richard Pryor. He tried, or he tried to. He, we, and we, Jimmy we, smashed him pretty good. Yeah, he. Uh, it was just, we were just talking. He's just spoken word, and I'm like, why don't you just do stand up? Because he's it's like there's like jokes in there, and uh, he's like, what? So I can write a uh, and he did some smart like remark like I, mean, I could do it so I can write like a chick joke or something like that. Like all comics oh. just do that. And then Jimmy got up and punched him so hard in the face. Through the phone. That uh, Henry uh, fell down. I said, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I guess that's what comedians do. Like Richard Pryor, Sam Pierce, and we just got into an argument. He's like, yeah. well, I've been listening to Pryor since you guys were 12. And then he just named Pryor albums wrong. Hey, you want a little trivia? Uh, yes. About, uh, Henry Rollins and my uh, illustrious radio career? Maybe Opie can, uh, maybe Opie remembers this. Something. Henry Rollins has something that was a milestone in my radio career. Do you remember what it was? Wow, and I'm pretty good at this stuff usually. Yep. Give me like a slight hint. It was at W A A F. I know what it was. No, you don't. I do actually. You told me. Shut your face. You told me. No, I, I haven't because I just remembered. I would say oh. it would be the first person you interviewed on the radio, but that's the no. Only. Uh, you're you're but you're in the right ballpark. Mm. Fenway. <laughs> The, the first ass. The first celebrity you star fucked? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> the most famous guy to ever rape you on the console? <laughs> Jimmy Norton gets the point. What the hell no. is it? You don't remember? Let's see. Looking. looking. I don't know if anyone. Let me look at instant this. feedback. I'll refresh the page. If somebody has it, I will. Uh, no. It's a milestone no. in your radio career. Yeah. Like Henry Rollins. Kind of a milestone in my career. My radio career. You didn't warm up for Black Flag or something. Nope. When you were doing your band thing. This was the first interview I ever did solo because I was doing the show alone because you were home sick. I actually did the show by Holy myself. Holy shit, I remember that. Remember that? And he I did, did he the come show in? by myself. Yeah, it was me and Henry Rollins in the studio. I do remember. I had been doing radio for no time, and I'm <laughs> sitting there alone trying to work the buttons. Because <laughs> God forbid they had a, someone give give me a fucking board op back then. <laughs> cheap go? AAF. Uh, actually, it went really well. The interview went great. It went good. And yes, it was. I do remember it went well. And we played music. It wasn't a talk show. What is my fucking? His sickness got better in the snake. <laughs> Obviously, <are> going. <coughs> No, because you I'm know something? <laughs> it was I'm fine. As far as <laughs> as far as playing music, because we played a lot of music uh, back then, and it was just make sure that when the CD counts down, make sure you have the next one in there. It's pretty much you know easy to do. And then Henry Rollins came in, had a good interview with him. I thought it went well. Uh, but in between, like when I had to front sell or back sell a song, I, I just what the fuck do I know? Hey, that was um. Yeah, Pearl Jam. No, it sucks. Uh, no, it sucks. No one gave a shit about us back then, so there's no <laughs> tape. No, no tape. Now every word we say is recorded, recorded. and passed around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Placed in shrines. Good point, Nixon. <laughs> it really I is, though. I don't, why, I don't know, but... Yeah, every show, every word from a show can be found somewhere. I guarantee there's no tape of that. No, that was though. That was my first uh, solo, Very flying good. solo. Well, Henry Rollins will be here at 10 a.m. He's got a new show on uh, IFC, I believe. Right, mm -hmm. he's doing a talk show over there. Yeah, he does like uh, reviews, movie reviews, and interviews. I saw him. I saw him. No, it used to be movie reviews, and now they expanded his role, and oh, now he's doing did. he's doing some talk stuff over there for them. Cool. Uh, well, there's a bunch of things we could do. We got uh, Patrice O'Neill in studio. We got worst stutterer ever. 
We have a story coming out of uh, Minnesota. It looks like man busted for jacking it. We might need Steve for that. <laughs> Why? He was in the urinal next to him. <laughs> Guy, guy needed something to a jack to. <laughs> I like this country music idea. I never did you this. You want to try the country music idea? Oh, We yeah, had a lot of here. fun with this. Yeah, with, let's uh, do that. With Patrice when you were in Hollywood there, I Jimmy. I like that. Also, we have a, a peek at another sitcom Ooh. called Teachers. That's a lot of fun usually, too. Yeah. Dan put that together? Uh, yes. Of course he did. Yes. Wonderful. You want to do the country music thing? I'd like to try it. Every yeah. once in a while, we look at the uh, top country songs in America. Now, uh, and we're, we, we're not too um, and, uh, up to date on, on the country. I'm looking you know, at the top song. ten country songs in America, and the truckers are going to be very disappointed in us. I uh, I don't recognize one of them. I recognize some of the artists, but... Some of the names. I haven't heard any of these songs. They don't recognize it. Well, won't give them away, though, because it's a countdown type um, Ooh, thing, isn't it? Well, isn't this a countdown kind of bit, Opie? What we try to do is we we read the song title, and then we try to figure out what the country song is about. That's it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Well, this one's easy. Which one? Number 10. All right. Number 10. So, would you want to just get into this a little bit? Yeah. We don't have to play all 10. We'll look at some of the titles of the top 10 country songs in America and see uh, which ones we want to go with, okay? Yeah. So, number 10 is Leanne Rimes' Something's Gotta Give. Something's Gotta Give. This uh, has to be. Uh, she's in a relationship, it's bad. Something's gotta give. Either she's, either this guy's gotta straighten up his shit, or she's fucking leaving. I'll make the difference, Patrice. All right, Patrice. And this is where I respect Patrice very much because he can usually figure this shit out. And if you tie 9/11 into this, I, <laughs> God. I just don't want to. I just don't want to think to be everybody that I'm always against my friend Anthony. Right. Just 9/11 thing. Now. <laughs> Something's got to give. I would say that this chick is trying to um, be very. Somebody gave her some 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 advice to be very in tune with her audience, and I think something's got to give is that shit's been going bad, and it's got to pick up. Really? I, yes. I disagree. Like in her life? In her life. Can I go? Okay. All right. I think um, the star of this song is just constipated. <laughs> think it's <laughs> like she's got to take a really bad you dump. How much money Just would like, that make, though? <laughs> if this was the sexy bitch going, mm, something's got to give. Something. <gasps> I think just like the staff of the Opie and Anthony program, the star of this song eats a lot of egg whites. <laughs> and something's got to get. Something's got to get. <laughs> yeah, the oxy powder. <laughs> uh, Jimmy? Jimmy, any ideas? Leanne Rhymes, something's got to give. I think um, she's being fucked by a fat man on a little flimsy wooden bed. <laughs> <laughs> a little futon. So, so it's referring to the bed? Yeah. <laughs> and the bed's going to give. It's so. her, her back or the bed. Oh, the bed. going to break. Her, her hips. <laughs> her hips on the bed. Something's got to give. So keep pumping, fat boy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cougar getting fucked. <laughs> Something, oh, <laughs> something's got to give. Old graham cracker hip. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to Kelly in Wisconsin. So we'll let the listeners play a little bit. Kelly, too. Kelly, you've never heard this song before, right? I've never heard that song before, and just to let you know, I'm a truck driver. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Kelly. Just wait one second. Girl's name Kelly. Why? I I think this song is basically. Nah, he doesn't get it because it, it's normal to him now. <laughs> Do you spell it with an I, with a little heart over the I? <laughs> no, why? Kelly, why? Why did your parents call you Kelly? You know, I don't know. I know there was uh, there's some like men that are named Kelly. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking Bad News Bears. Uh, yeah, Kelly yeah. Uh, Le Kelly Leak Leak or something like that. Yeah. Oh, how many truck He wasn't exactly the most. Kelly. If you're looking for the most badass guy, I don't think you got it, Opie. <laughs> was, uh, little Kelly Leak. He was badass on the air hockey table, but yeah, he really wasn't a badass in that movie, was he? Tatum O'Neill smashed him in air hockey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Kelly Van Damme. <laughs> Kelly Van Damme. Wham bam Van Damme. Oh, Hi. you guys rock. Yeah, no, we, we know Kelly. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what's yeah. the song about? Kelly Saunders. Actually, I think it's about a virgin who just can't find a guy with a big enough dick to break it. <laughs> Is he waiting to break that hymen? <laughs> so the, the something is the hymen? <laughs> Something's got to give. All right. 
right, that's close. You know how much money she would make if she could be smart enough to make a f- disgusting song like she got. She's constipated. Yeah, and rhymes money. has enough money. All right, <laughs> why don't we uh, try to? Why don't we find out what something's got to give all is right. all about? See, this reminded me of another song called "Someone's Got to Give." It was about trying to collect for a charity at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Let's uh, listen to a piece of Something's Gotta Give. Leanne Rice. The heart of beginning stinks. This is hot country. Some kind of. Is this Michael Jackson's Indian first song? Shit. <laughs> Hold this. George Harrison, Bangladesh. <laughs> All right. All right. Patrice up. hit this right on the head. She's unhappy with her life in general. She's getting a little older. And something's got to give. Gotta give. Yeah. Fucking Patrice, man. Because he likes his music. Give. Patrice secretly likes his music. Yeah, he knows. He knows my dick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he is a secret. <laughs> no, it ain't. You can just feel it that she's. It's a. Somebody said, listen, make something that makes you not. It's a, now she couldn't have made this song about her because she's fucking fine and she's rich. She's but it's great. like some got to give. Hey, you know, she's she's tired and feet hurting. Man. I always think when country though, I always think it's gonna be some guy beating her or some shit. Yeah. But but, but you 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 hit it right on the head. Brian from Jersey. Brian. Gentlemen, how are you? Hey. Hi. I really think the song is about her eating too much because her career's gone down the shitter and she's going to be seen on the next Celebrity Fit Club. Oh, Leon Rhymes? What? <laughs> y'all, y'all talk, I can't even tell motherfuckers are trying to be funny. This is how people get no respect for humor, and how hard it is. Couldn't. That stunk the high heavens <laughs> so bad. And, and he just was working on it and working he on tried. it. Right. He should have been a quick one-liner. If you even wanted to do it, like something's got to give. Uh, if you've seen it lately, I think it's her waistline or a pant line or a pants fucking seam. Anything but what he did. And me trying to fix it? <laughs> right. You know what, Gabe? The windshield, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Ah, Dix Bentley. <laughs> I am the man on Dix Bentley. I am crime fighter Dix Bentley. <laughs> I remember this guy. Well, he's got another hit on he's the top. He's got another hit. This guy's amazing. Fucking Dix. Top country songs. Dix Bentley. Ninth place this week. It's uh, Dix Bentley. Settle for a slowdown. Settle for a slowdown. Settle for a slowdown. All right, I believe uh, first choice goes to the winner of the last, Patrice. Yeah, Patrice is uh, Patrice is in the lead here. I, if I knew what his, I remember what his last song was. But his, uh, his, he, Mr. Bentley has a theme. Yeah. I would say that this is about um, a guy who's on the move. Mm-hmm. I think that he's he's um, being giving his girl some quickies. Yeah, and he's been away, mm-hmm. and he's coming back, and he's gonna go. Hey, look. Let's this this tonight's for you. We're gonna dance. We're gonna hold. I'm gonna hold you. Uh-huh. It's like a, a about a romantic evening. All right. Let's settle for a slowdown. I I don't I don't I don't see it as a relationship thing here. Um, okay. I see it as a lifestyle thing. I think Dierks is uh, maybe out on the road. He's really been working hard, and uh, it's time to maybe get back to uh, his roots. Get back home to mom and apple pie and and settle for a slowdown. Just you know, kind of kind of step off a little and slow down. I uh, I had the advantage to actually know the song. Oh okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I do actually know this one. It's yeah. it was um, <laughs> advice in a song given to a, a radio producer as all his friends walked in and saw his face over a dollar bill on a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been intervention. <laughs> Are we ready to find out what this song's about? What do you uh, think it is, yeah. Pudding Pop? I just read it. And could you guys Cause, cause please... Because the idiots, they, they, they turn they hand assholes, out, whoever handles this lyrics. out. They hand out the lyrics as we're trying to figure out what the song's about, and of course we're going to look. Could you put the lyrics down in front of us, upside fucking down, so we can't see the or fucking no words? Or no lyrics at Who all. Who did that? that? Fucking figure Who did it? Damn hawk. Who no, did the it? the lyrics are good, the timing's bad. When we start the song, that means all guesses are over, and then we can start Who reading the it? lyrics to make sure we know what it's hey, all about. Hey, shit dick. Get on that fucking mic. You're Because now you're dealing with me. Yeah, what happened to you, Mercurial Lips? Are you insane? <laughs> do you know what we're doing with this bit? Sorry. We're trying to get... I asked you, do you know what we're doing with this bit? Yes, I do. What is it? You're guessing the lyrics before you see the words. Here's song. Right. Uh, and now, what is the problem with throwing him in front of me a piece of paper with the lyrics on there with this bit? <laughs> right. Tell Ant the problem. What's the problem with Tell that? Him. 
It ruins the bit because you're going to see the lyrics ahead of time. There you go. You're not half as stupid as everyone knows you are. Jeez. How much now? How much money do you make? Nothing. All right, you're fired. Exactly. And why do you have hair on the back of your arms? It's creepy. <laughs> Holy crap, you do. Where? You're just creepy wolf arms. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? Everywhere. You're supposed to have it on the top, not the fucking bottom, the soft part. Will you give Stephen Buscemi nose a break? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to be nice now. I'm going to be nice because I know it was a mistake. Get the fuck out of That's here. That's right. <laughs> Get the fuck out of this studio. That nose looks like the mountain that the mountain climber on the Price is Right goes up. When you walk in from now, <laughs> Get out, stupid. Yo, yo, yo. That fucking... That's right. got be rated beyond repair. That's right. Take your geometric nose oh, and beat it. Oh, he was just shaking uh, and stirred. I <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Holy shit. Why did you fucking bring us the words? Oh, no. We know the internet is for point. Didn't you see me hit seven? What happened? It's eight. I'm correct, Anthony. All right. It's done. Too much time has passed. No, it's not. <laughs> no, you're right. That's still very funny. Uh, oh, here he comes, running in, putting the lyrics in front of us, and ruining this part of the pit. Let's listen to Dirk Spentley. Yeah. Now, settle for a slowdown. My wife, Karen Bentley. <laughs> I must look just like a fool. Uh oh. So far, I'm right. But I settle for a slowdown. Okay. Oh, boy. Bitch ditched him. He's out in the rain. She drives away. He uh, is hoping she'll, you know, stop and shit, but uh, he knows he ain't gonna, she ain't gonna do that. But he'd settle for just, you know, slow down. At least, at least to let him know she's thinking about him. Beep, beep. Right. Meh, meh, meh. A little something. We all got it wrong. God damn, this is unlistenable too. And you, and you just see a trucker just driving down with that, that, that glaze. <laughs> that glaze. God little, damn. <laughs> they'll sit on, on I-9000. <sighs> Fucking in Iowa. <laughs> hey, hey, wait, we got Mike from Philly. Uh, Mike, what's the song about? Settle for a slowdown. Well, that's not at all what I expected. I thought for sure it was his chick was going to have a retarded kid, but he wasn't going to bust out the coat hanger. He was going to keep him for comic relief or something. Settle for a slowdown. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, settle for a slowdown. God damn. Yeah, trucker, just like... Mile eight million, driving down the road listening to that one. One tear dripping down his face yeah. and a beer in his hand. And maybe Tim. CB radios his chick oh. who's driving the other way. She's in Utah, breaker, breaker. <laughs> delivering corn niblets. Breaker, breaker, one man. And over there, baby doll, I'd settle for a slowdown. He's delivering powdered milk. But no, <laughs> the truck kids got to get to Austin. But I'd settle for a slowdown. <laughs> <laughs> she got another pickup in New Mexico. She got just she got a pickup. She got a pickup. Uh, 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 bottle nipples, nipples for for baby bottle nipples. <laughs> and he's hauling a truckload of prosthetic left feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just never. Uh, all right. Every time you talk to a trucker, it's something awful. <laughs> what are you hauling never nuclear today? Nuclear stuff. What you never something there? exciting or fun yeah. or anything. <laughs> Top half vanilla wafers. Woo. I got a truckload of them. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Is there a problem, also? Yeah. What you hauling, man? Well, I just got a. Uh, uh, I got the uh, box tops and uh. The the uh the the thing that makes the treads on wheels. What? Yeah, I got a. I just waited over there. I mean, uh, the wheel treader. They're very heavy. <laughs> very heavy. Uh... These motherfuckers haul anything. What are you uh What are you hauling? Uh, well, for I'm taking this to a lab. You know those skin tags that show up on fat people's fat people's necks? I got forty tons of them. <laughs> I got forty tons. I gotta go somewhere. Heart monitor stickers. I got heart. What do you got back there? Woo! What you got back there, boy? Heart monitor stickers. What? You wanna open up the back so I can take a look? There they are. That's what I got, sir. 
Very true. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the guys hauling like guns? Or <laughs> Playboy magazine. Playboy. Nothing. Anything customer. exciting. <laughs> like you said, something nuclear, you know? This is the uh, lid to a nuclear reactor. <laughs> hauling. <laughs> they gotta open up that thing. They gotta, they gotta pull the latch down. Blue. Bring this one over. Clock. <laughs> the fucking thing just flies up. Vroom. There it what is. Got, uh, there it is, man. Right. Right. Wanna check the boxes? It's heart monitor. Yeah. Heart <laughs> monitor stickers. 15,000 mannequin heads. <laughs> Sit. Oh, prosthetic feet. <laughs> and if they ain't in Sacramento by Wednesday, I'm fucked, officer, so we could close this up and get a move on. Gotta keep them on ice. <laughs> Prosth prosthetic feet gotta stay cold. Now, my gotta be 64.6. Now, right now, you make <laughs> It went up to 65. Oh, I gotta shut this door, sir. <laughs> Look at it. One of the baby toes is melting. <laughs> Settle for a slow down. <laughs> All right. See, let's move on to the next song, I guess. All right. All right Do we have anything on Brooks and Dunn? Brooks believe? And Dunn bel believe could be anything. I already, yeah. I actually know that one too. No, yeah. you don't. It's what dummies do when 9 11 conspiracies are presented to them. <laughs> Well, he was big and stupid <laughs> coming into the show. <laughs> and he used the egg comparison so people spit on him. <laughs> I believe, I believe when the buildings fell, it was dynamite. It was Jew insurance. <laughs> I don't know who did it, boy, <laughs> Ain't it always the Jews trying to make a nickel? <laughs> and Patrice believe. believe. <laughs> <laughs> and he believe. Uh, right. We'll skip believe. Yeah, I don't. I don't care what that is. Let's move on to Faith Hill, the lucky one, number seven. All Our right, country Faith song in America, Hill, the lucky one is. She's um, is the title. Yes. Is she attractive from this uh, album cover? Uh, Faith Hill is hot. Yeah, 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 all right. Sure, yeah. The lucky one. Well. This could go a lot of ways. Oh, hold on a minute. I right, think we'll leave Jimmy's choice to last from the smile on his face. Hold on, because we're not done with the, the past. Oh, now. okay. Mike in Missouri, is this true? Yes, this is very true. I just delivered a load of cadavers to the University of Wisconsin. <laughs> All right, a load of cadavers. That's at least a little exciting. That's a pretty cool load, though, man. Yeah. Dead yeah, bodies. you know, because if you got the necrophilia going, you know, you can find a hot chick in there. You know, you now, can get it going really good. Obviously, it was a it refrigerated uh, truck. He's gone. He's gone. I uh, hope so. I hope it wasn't an open truck like they haul chickens in. The pigs. The fucking arms sticking out the side. <laughs> Look, nothing worse than those stinky fucking pig trucks with their pig asses hanging out and just green shit coming down the side. How easy would it have for him to be one of those truck stop murderers, though, those hooker murderers? You just throw them in the back. Yep. There you go. You off the count a little bit. Uh, nice. Now the trucker's calling in like crazy. Jason uh, from Texas, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Ole? Hey, buddy. Uh, hey, man, I'm pretty cool shit. Uh, mostly Barrett Jackson cars for uh, private collectors, the NFL players, NBA, major baseball league. Cars? Uh, yeah, cars, like uh, the S7 Sailing. That's a half a million dollar car. And I uh, take it right to their house. I got a big-ass <laughs> autograph collection. Wow. I've met uh, Shaq, yeah, That's Richard pretty cool. Rappes. Harrison Ford. We're not looking for cool shit. We're looking for really, your boring shit. He's not shit. really a trucker, though. He's the yeah. guy that he's guy that has those cars on his yeah, fucking car thing. carrier. Yeah, that's not, right. that's not a trucker. We'll get more truckers on in a second. So it's Faith Hill, the lucky one. The lucky one. Well, um, I want to go first instinct. I'm just going to go with uh, there was a choice to be made. By the way, did anyone get to the last one? Yes. No, no one we got that it. last one. No, the no, uh, slow, slow, uh, slow, 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 slow down. down. No, 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 one no, no one did that. All right, Faith Hill, the lucky one. I'm going to say there's a choice to be made by some wonderful gentleman, and uh, he, she was picked, and she is indeed the lucky one. Yeah, you think? I absolutely agree that wow. she's lucky, and so she's yeah. lucky from him in some sort of way. I think a uh, little love triangle, maybe. Mm -hmm. There was he was thinking about a couple different broads. No I don't know. Way. That then that's no not way. good. You know, yeah, maybe that's not that good because then she's like. The second. She's a clown. Yeah, yeah. She's the lucky one. This is this is something to uplift his self esteem. Like yeah. he's like she's like you know I'm the lucky one because you know you're a great guy. She's the lucky some one. dumb guy who thinks this is a this is a reverse psychology arrogance to say mm -hmm. that you may think that I'm the lucky that you're the lucky one because I'm such a hot bitch. But hey, hey, I'm hey, the lucky one. Let's go. Ooh. Let's say hi to Vinny Ooh, in Vegas. That's good. Vinny. Hey 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 how y'all doing? Hey. What's up, Vinny? 
Hey, I, I just want to say, you know, I take a little bit of offense to what you guys are saying because, you know, I drive for a living and mm. I, I don't drive, you know, hey, uh, grabbing a beer and stuff. Dude, we're, you know, we're joking, actually, dude. Vinny, if you don't get that we're joking and that everything's fair game, then this uh, this show is just not for you. We're I having fun that. with the <laughs> truckers. Wait, wait, I gotta Vinny, tell you. Now, wait, Vinny, no disrespect. Now, did, did you start driving uh, uh, when you were like 23 and had just gotten out of third grade? <laughs> I, I was driving when I was no. 12. I quit school. Uh, what happened was, uh, right. uh, you know, I don't drink beer when I'm driving. I actually drink bikini teenies and uh, I actually was hauling balloon nuts. <laughs> you all need one of those, too. <laughs> My awful third grade joke. Finished, I, just, <laughs> I just finished unloading a package full of fingernail polish brushes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got we got a good one here. Larry the trucker. Larry, what are you hauling? I've got a flatbed truck, and I'm hauling a serious satellite radio. <laughs> Just the one? Yeah, I've got the, it, huh? lights, the oversized stickers for the one radio. <laughs> there you go. George the trucker. George. Hello. Hey, George. i got a load of tree bark. You're hauling tree bark? i got tree bark on here, yeah? You must feel like a sap. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, hey, big doll is I, the box. are you still at the station or did you leave yet? <laughs> Man, you, uh, stop with this job. You got to branch out. I, yeah, I, wanna, I really uh, wanted that one. <laughs> hey, truckers, they're always on the road, can never put down roots and just raise a family. That's why I like this show. Your man, your man, not whole. <laughs> Hey, those guys, those guys hauling the lumber, they get pretty bored. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't you dare don't. fucking give him a call, uh, Brad. That was it. Uh, that's fuck. This is really butting uh, into a good bitch. Uh, I, really, I really wanted to say to Branch when you're cocksucking his <laughs> Give him the car crash. Absolutely not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you look like your finger was on the way to the car crash. I'm bored. Uh, let's go to Ben's raw ass. Ben's raw ass, what's up today? Nah. Hey, guys, that Faith the Lucky, the Lucky One song, I wanted to take a guess at what the uh, Lucky One means. Yeah. Okay. I think she found out she was going to have a retard, then she had a miscarriage. Oh, my God. Who saw that coming? I really didn't. The lucky Oh, one. my God. <laughs> Just the way he said she oh. found out she was going to have a retard. A retard. <laughs> Let's go to Jeff the Trucker. Jeff. Yeah, I was hauling the ping pong balls. You're hauling ping the, pong uh, balls? Ping pong balls went across the state scale. They didn't think the truck weighed out right. It was a little bit light. A uh, state trooper insisted on opening the back doors. Stepped about 30 feet back. He was wondering why I backed up so far. I called another one of his buddies and told him, you really don't want to do that. Opened up the doors. Filled the ditch about 10 feet worth of ping pong balls. Put both the troopers on their ass. Aren't they in boxes, They're in boxes, sir? They're not that stupid. Come on. You're dumb. How would they more. load them then to, and yeah. shut the door? You, you have to you keep lying sack of shit. For the last hey, twelve thousand, hey, hey, you have to open the door, throw it in the closet, open the door, <laughs> throw it in the closet. <laughs> All right, Faith Hill, the lucky one. The lucky one. What do we got in this song? I was horrified when I saw the sonogram. <laughs> 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 I said, what is it, Doc? He said, you're not going to like it, ma'am. <laughs> is it a ham? <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> when head. I saw the stewed tomato <laughs> on the bathroom floor, I knew I was the lucky one. I squeegeed up the embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> and threw it in a cup. <laughs> I think uh, Patrice has got this one down here, the lucky one. What is Mike. it again, Patrice? Real fast, I forgot. And she's trying to help. With, uh, she, I, she might be trying to help with some guy's self-esteem. Where it's, a, it's reverse arrogance, which is like you think you're the lucky one because well, you're I'm with this. The lucky one. But I'm, I'm the, the lucky, lucky one, one, you fucking loser. You know, because she's in love with some cornball who looks like shit. Man, she's trying to give him some, some like, love, you know? i got to come up with something different, though. Because we need different ones. Because well, I could agree with that. Well, there's nothing wrong with agreeing if it's correct. I'm thinking she's got... All right, the story is there's a, a woman. Uh, one of her pals is uh, kind of well-off, well-to-do, rich. Uh, and um, <clears throat> she's getting, like, she's not happy. But she, the other one, humble <clears throat> lifestyle. She works. She's got a good man. You know, even though it looks... 
the other way around, she's the lucky, lucky one. one. I, I, you know what? I, you I could go eat. See, either way, I'm eleven conspiracy. I could, go, I could be moved right into thinking <laughs> right. like I'm, I'm very easy. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. It just kind of makes. And sense. it almost makes it almost clever sense. It's almost like yeah, it could you know. be that. Could be doing like I'm the yeah. you oh cause your man got money and da 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 yeah, right. but my man is a man mm -hmm. I'm the okay you know your what? man's out every night my man's with me sing like that you guys are reading too much into oh, it right. um, <laughs> I've actually I've actually heard this song it, it was it, believe it or not it's a song about Bob Kelly <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that that fat nothing hooked his little chubby fingers into Dane Cook's fucking <laughs> and got on television by default because he was on a bus Bob's on TV because he happened to be on a bus. <laughs> Fat Rosa Parks. <laughs> he's, he's the lucky one. Let's go to Candyman. Candyman. Uh, good morning, good. boys. Good morning, oh, Candyman. I guess a that song. Yeah. Uh, it's a tribute song. What uh, Lady Di's husband said when he saw the light of the train coming. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Di's husband. <laughs> song about Lady Di's husband. Very good, Candyman. All right, let's uh, let's find out what this lucky one is all about. The lucky one, Faith Hill. On the Cougar. Yeah. Turns out the lucky one is whoever dies before the song is over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's fucking drag. It's, it's not even. It's not even a song really about a real relationship. It's just words. Yeah. yeah. So they don't. She, have... she ain't got much. Yeah. But she got, it's not even a they, because it seems like she's living alone. She's just kind of hooked up with this guy. Uh, and uh, she's living in shit. Money's not everything. She ain't got no money. She ain't got shit. But she got the guy, so she's the lucky one. All right, I was half right. There ain't no other person involved. Patrice had this one pretty good. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. Patrice is, like, really good at this bit. No one's going to care yeah. in the end, but he's good at it. <laughs> no one's going to care in the end. Yeah, that's a real resume I'm a stuffer. I know. I know. And I, I could can, pick country songs just from the title. <laughs> just for the title. Amazing talent. You are. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Jack Ingram, wherever yes. you are. I'm <laughs> Jack Ingram. I work for the FBI. <laughs> Jack Ingram, crime fighter. <laughs> uh, wherever you are. Well, that seems are. kind of self-explanatory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are. I'm fucking someone else. Oh. No? Wherever you are, I'm song, thinking of you. It's a song about hide and seek. <laughs> come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> it's a song about the G spot. Where? You are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this comic dude a bit about the, uh, he, he this, I forgot who it was, but he goes, my girl doesn't have a G spot, she has an Edward G. Robinson spot, and it goes, You'll never find me, see? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who it was. I'd give him credit if I knew, but... Oh, man, man, you'll never man. find me, see? <laughs> 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 Wherever you are, um, damn funny. It's about. <laughs> it's gonna be a boring one. I, I, it's about. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I mean, Adam Walsh is. I like. I'm not even gonna finish no. it. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh man. No. Oh man. No. Oh, okay, should I've gone eight on pace? <laughs> yeah. Enough time. Nah, Natalie Holloway. Holloway. You know, she's older. Natalie Holloway. She's to left. Holla, 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 wherever holla, you are. Holla. No, kind of on the theme of the other one. It's, it's, it's kind of a woman. She finds out that she's pregnant and it's gonna, you know, have a syndrome, and she's actually singing to the hanger. <laughs> <laughs> it's wherever you are, I'm thinking about you, loving you, blah, 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 corn, dreck. Tim from whackbag.com. We're finally starting to read in some feedback again. Uh, Faith Hill, the lucky one. Yeah. Daddy fondled my sister instead of me. I'm the <laughs> lucky one. Or she's the lucky one. <laughs> Lemon. Uh. <laughs> Chester's liver from Whack Bag. Well, the lucky one is certainly not a song about Bonnie. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Uh, let's see, really. Uh, uh, her song is "I'm with the Schmucky One." 
Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I bought his DV. It was called the sucky one. <laughs> the, the, his DV. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you just wait? So I, eager. I was, Couldn't you put the next uh, D in? I was, I was, hurry, hurry. Harry, hurry. <laughs> I even noticed he didn't even put the D. Uh, oh, <laughs> TV. All right, uh, what's next? Well, uh, oh, where, wherever you are. Uh, yeah, wherever you are by Jack Ingram. George in Chicago, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. It's a song about Damone from Fast Times. <laughs> wherever you are, that's the place that's to the be. That's the place to be. Isn't that great? Hey, Debbie. You know, I bet you that you're you're right on. By the way, it's gonna be as simple as you know. He's, wherever he's, you are, I'm the happiest and I'm the most um, content. You know, and yeah, I'm on the road, but you know, wherever you are, yeah, yeah. miss you. All right, let's uh, let's play Jack Ingram. Wherever you Jack are. Ingram. Don't they all sound the same when they start? Every one. Fucking cast it. Yeah. This fall on Fox, a brand new situation comedy. Doesn't it sound like a horrible yeah. TV like show? Like a WB, yeah. a WB sitcom. Yeah. Almost, fuck the show. It really does. Look at this. Over Through rivers of rain, over mountains of pain, apparently wherever you are is in search of the nearest cliche. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but wherever you are. Oh, uh, yeah. So what is it about? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much, uh, yeah. Where? Wherever he is, he's thinking about this uh, chick. Yeah. All right. All right, well. Oof. That was a horrible these song. These country songs, man. Where, where's the men at in these fucking country Keith songs? Keith Urban is next. Listen to this title. Tonight I Want to Cry. Oh, <laughs> fucking fag. Really? I thought you motherfuckers was... You know what? Uh, what's, what's the, with Charlie Pride and, and Johnny Cash? What and... happened? Take the ribbon from your hair. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you tonight. It was like all about uh, yeah. getting a little and then tearing it up and drinking Johnny beer with Cash, your friends. I've been everywhere, man. He's like, I got you know, fuck the bitch and the old hole of here, rolling in the house, and I've come in the face and I've been there. Now nah, this fag wants well, to I'm cry. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Keep and I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> well, how about, There's no crying. Was that Charlie Rich that said, who couldn't who said his K's to it? Oh, how we love to tall. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? We got us a convoy. This goofy, something trying, manly. Tonight this I want to cry. Goofy girl left him, and he's he's keen, he's putting a big face on in front of his boys. And when he goes home, he fucking tears up because uh, his girl left him. You think? Sissy. It's a song about Iraq. I, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Oh, shit. I, you went there, huh? Well, that was cute. You know what? <laughs> even people on Pal Talk don't talk about the E-Rock crying. Yeah. I know. Like, man, really? even They're those vicious. Of shit. <laughs> They're vicious. <laughs> and does Neo ever sleep? <laughs> no. I click on every once in a while. Do, do, do. Neo He's is gone. on always. Up. Up and that little <laughs> drugged up gnome, he doesn't. <laughs> he looks like one of those, like you ever see an adult that you think is a baby at first because they're pushing it, they're wheeling it in some thing because it's got atrophied arms and feet and it's like fucking this big and you have to talk to it like it's on your level. <laughs> so, what can I get you? It's like, ah, ah. Ugh, really beside does, the pillow over the face. He really does look like an incredible Hulk villain. Remember the motherfucker? <laughs> and instead of getting strong, he just gets smarter. He's <laughs> <laughs> fucking cut <laughs> Like Watch out! <laughs> total recall, nigga! What? Quato. Quato. Just strap him under some guy's coat. <laughs> nigga, that's, that is the, that's the most obscure reference this year. Oh, is Quato. <laughs> Open your pouch, Paul. <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> yeah, we've been on that for Open years. Quato. Because we have Twato. Yeah. From Sandy Kane. Oh my god, Quato! I think Keith Urban, uh, this is a song about a man who, uh, uh, goes to the doctor and is prescribed broth and a robe. <laughs> or, or, oh no, it's actually a song by Mrs. Reed. <laughs> oh no, wait, that'd be, I didn't want to throw up. <laughs> Let's go to John. John wants to guess the song. John. Alright. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man. Hey, Jimmy, fuck your birthday, Swan. Next thing I want to say, I think that song's about Keith Urban or whoever it may be being a double in Brokeback Mountain for Heath Ledger. Punching out. Yeah, I... 
Yeah, he, he, was, he jumped out of the car before it hit. He, yeah. you know, he did a Starsky roll up and him up against the wall. <laughs> Do we need to find out what this is about? No. Some people are suggesting it's written by Howard Stern. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I can't wait to hear how he spins this one. Uh, what, Tonight I Want to Cry by Jack Ingram? Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, Jack Ingram. Tonight I Want to no, Cry. Keith Urban. Oh, Keith Urban. Uh, I'm Keith Urban. <laughs> All the guesses in, we can go through this one. Fast. Yeah, Tonight I Want to Cry. It's got to be. He lost his bitch. Uh... He doesn't and he, feel like being a man anymore. Yeah. He's got to let it all out. Maybe he's going to work through the day like that, be a man in front of his friends. But tonight, eh, he's going to cry. What the fuck? Yeah. Fucking. We have lyrics for this one? Give me lyrics to this pussy song. This is horrible. <laughs> this is I got the TV on, sound turned down, and a bottle of wine. Oh, fuck. Oh. There's a job of log in the fireplace. <laughs> day from framing ham is over. Because <laughs> I'm so gay. <laughs> well, let It's going to hurt bad. Dude. Jerk off, you'll feel better. <laughs> Crank one out, find Die Hard on TV, and man up. This song is seven seconds long. I've never seen it. Isn't that awful? Bikini yeah. Teeny. Yeah, I think that song was written by Opie when he figured out he couldn't have uh, Florida from Good Times. <clears throat> Sir? Punching out. <laughs> Too late. No punching out wow. from that wreck. Tonight I don't want to cry. We all nailed that one. Tonight I don't want to cry. It's painful. Yeah, this country. <laughs> and it makes it just makes it just makes you. It gives men a bad name because you know what it does. These are the type of songs when you are driving. Say you're a truck or whatever. You're driving. You listen to this fucking guy, and you had gotten over your girl. Yeah. You, know, you got it over, and then it's like, or you, or you think you was too hard on her that night because she uh -huh. did some stupid shit. So this fucking asshole's driving, and you're listening, and you now you start questioning whether you're doing the right thing. Start or not. put yourself in the situation. And, and, and then you call her, and you're like, hey, I'm sorry about what I did. I was a little too hard, and that's where the fagging starts, and that's where it goes down. So songs like this. Are detrimental. Detrimental. Fucking mental to right. everybody. And we'll move on to number four. Country artist Jason Aldean. Jason Aldean. Why? Yep. And a song called Why. Well, well, because because uh, he wasn't getting the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. You know what the whole gist is going to be about. You know why you're leaving. You think? Yeah, gotta be. Jimmy. Well, I hate to return to an earlier theme. But I think that every time there's a photograph taken of the family and there's a Pete Rose hairdo in it, <laughs> the mother has to silently ask God, why, 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 why? Yeah. I think uh chick uh, left and he's uh, asking why. Now he's talking to God. You think he's talking to God? Uh, he's talking to God. His life's not going well and he just wants mm. to know why. I think it's um, <clears throat> I, th I think it's a girl that tells a guy that he should put on a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask Patrice, have you ever heard this shouted by a white girl's father when you came in the house? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to go back to. Um... We gotta go back to oh, tonight. I want to. We gotta go back to tonight. I want to cry by Keith Urban. All Victor right. From Baltimore. Yes, Victor. Okay, I gotta tell you about two songs. The uh, Why by Al Dean is because uh, Keith Urban is crying because Lenny Kravitz stretched out Nicole Kidman's pussy. <laughs> so he doesn't feel anything right now, and he's sitting there crying because he's hitting it, but not feeling a damn thing. Way to do the joke twice. <laughs> Wow, these guys are car crashing. All right. So, uh, why? Let's find out. Let's find out. It's 3 a.m. Of course it is. <laughs> to cut the deepest, there's only one. <laughs> why did I call you a cunt when you talked while the game was on? 
I know how much it hurts you. Oh, baby, why? First of all, this is this indicative of these country losers that they they can't keep their women? They're they drink, horrible with they their women. Hit them and they feel guilty. They hit them and then they always try to get them back. And these dopey broads are the ones that always come back. They're the why to come back to this asshole one more time? Where's the ugly redneck country star bitch who's singing? You know why'd you kick me in the pussy at four thirty when I was asleep? <laughs> if it wasn't for domestic violence, country music. Music would have begun and ended with a devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> Thank God for wife beating. That's not a clit ring. That's the tip of your boot. Stuck in my labia. You asshole. Why do you make me polish your knuckles with my teeth? <laughs> my, my pussy is not a, a football holder. <laughs> <laughs> my pussy is not a football holder by Cheryl Lee Johnson Jones. <laughs> Why do you jump in my pussy like a five-year-old in a puddle? <laughs> puddle pussy. What? The new hit song, Puddle Pussy, by Jacqueline Rigamortone. Mifflusen. Mifflusen. That's the worst fake name ever. That's the worst Someone's got to call you out on it. Jacqueline Mifflusen. <laughs> It's 4.38, I have a digital watch, that's how I know, it's time to punch you in the tits, before I go, why does it always have to hurt you, when I punch you in the tits, it's just always awful, although I always hit the left one, cause the right one has an unpleasant lump, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that lump ain't cancer. <laughs> I know. That's a punch. <laughs> All right. Let's, we got to hurry up because we've got other things to yeah. do. we got to break, right. and uh, Henry Rollins will be here any minute. A little crossover uh, hit here. What is this? Bon Jovi duet? No, number three, which was, actually, which was actually a song. Oh. Um, it's a song. That well, our, this, our, it's Toby uh, Keith, Get Drunk and Be Somebody. It's yeah. not by Toby Keith. It was actually a positive affirmation that old Ben Sparks sings into the mirror. <laughs> Do we really have to play Get Drunk and Be Somebody? I think we know what that one's all about. Getting drunk and being somebody. Is that oh, what it's about? He saved the best one for last, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, Jesus, it's 800. <laughs> <laughs> number two ain't bad either. Not at all. Now, coming in at number two by John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Number two. Uh, let's see. John Bon Jovi duet with Jennifer Nettles. Who says you can't go home? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Opie that fake name was awful? I was trying to think of a good fake name. Like, call it. Oh. Somebody told him that fake name was awful. I knew it was awful coming out. You know, what I mean? <laughs> your mind wants to work better than it's working. <laughs> right. Like, Come on, mind, please. Come on, man. Don't let me Come down, brain. Something, here, right? <laughs> something good? Nothing. <laughs> Joanne McGillicuddy. Oh. Uh, yeah, who says uh, you can't come home? This is. Uh... Written for Susan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the little. <laughs> no. Uh. Oh my. Want to go right to number one? Yes. Uh, it's actually um, um great. <laughs> Rascal Flats. The song title. It's called uh, What Hurts the Most, and it was actually a song written when I accidentally looked at Open Ant's pay stubs. That's going to hurt even more. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Anyway. Sure it is. Anyway, what hurts the most? Yeah, what hurts the most? What hurts the most, Patrice? Um, mm. I don't know, you know. It's just some more faggy shit. No. Yeah, it's going to be more faggy shit. What hurts the most? Bits over. Uh, I think... Yeah. What, you don't want to hear it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many more sonogram jokes should we do? <laughs> we reached our quota. We're, we keep track these days. <laughs> I could take the rain on the roof of this empty house. That don't bother me. I could take a few tears now and then and just let them out. I'm not afraid to cry every once in a while. Oh. Even though going on with you gone still upsets me. There are days every now and again I pretend I'm okay, but that's not what gets me. What hurts, what hurts the, most? the most was being so close and having so much to say and watching you walk away 
and never knowing Dude. what could have been and not seeing that loving you is what I was trying to do. It's not, that's not even the song. That's Dice writing a letter to Opie. <laughs> hey, hey, what hurts the most? What the hell was that? What was that? All right, wh why don't we take a break? <laughs> what hurts the most? Yeah. Country music stinks to high heaven. I'm great. sorry. <laughs> I mean, my ass is all sonogram. <laughs> why is there a Macy's float in my sonogram? Well, ma'am. <laughs> is that Stewie? Uh, <laughs> how, did, how did an Easter Island head get in my wife, oh, doctor? <laughs> Motherfucker, the most. <laughs> Motherfucker, is that his head? You better pull that nigga out by the feet. <laughs> you <laughs> turn this motherfucker around. Let him walk out the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we? What hurts the most is going to be trying to l deliver that tongue. <laughs> <laughs> what hurts the most when he steps on your foot when he's 170 pounds and four years old? <laughs> All right, Jesus Christ. Right. Right. How many can we now, do? Now, Miss, it's possible for you to give, have 15 months labor. It's possible to actually, for the baby to stay in 15, it can cook a little longer if you <laughs> That's what hurts the most. What, what hurts I... the most? When he's 17 and I brag that he changed his own underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what hurts the most? <laughs> when his ABCs all sound like A's. No, I said my hey. <laughs> what hurts the most? When I have to put a medal around his neck like he really wants. <laughs> <laughs> Goldie from Tennessee wants in on this. Goldie. Hey, what's going on? What hurts the most? The ass of the throat. Now grab my pocket and meet me in the cell, bitch. Wow, man. And you had potential. <laughs> the listeners are 0 for 10. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Ugh. Someone has a country song joke. Ah, this will tie it all up in a nice little package, won't it? Cornbread. Hey, uh, first of all, I gotta tell you, I love your fucking show. I'm so glad I found y'all. Thank you, man. We and don't give Jimmy, a shit. Are you ever coming to Alabama or Nashville by any chance? No. Who well, did ask you? Did you say Patrice or Jim? <clears throat> well, obviously Jimmy. Patrice will not be going there, but Jimmy, Alabama. Yeah, I actually got a date booked. Um. Oh, really? No. 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 Uh, Eventually, yeah, I'll get down there. Yeah, he'll figure it out. All right, now, okay, I got a joke. Y'all probably car crashed me, but what do you get when you play a country song backwards? Oh, no. You're not going with this one. Don't you? go with it. No, dude, no, dude, no, before you... Get your house back. Before you say... No, no, no. No, no, before you say it, on this. pull the handle between your legs. Pop the canopy. <laughs> Just pop the canopy and float we're, down. We're giving you a chance to punch out. Do you want to punch out, sir? I am punching the fuck out. Punch out. All right, very good. We lost an expensive aircraft. But at least he's okay. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Henry Not Rollins. That joke. Next. Yes. So what are you doing now? You got a independent uh, film channel? I have a whole channel. Yes. The whole channel, just uh, you? No. no, you got a show on the independent I have, I have film a, channel. Uh, a meager half hour a week on the independent film channel. Yeah. I have a meager show called Henry. half hours. Yeah, Fine. it's a Henry Rollins show. I think it's actually a 25 minute show. So it's less than half an hour. That's a great game, but, man. Uh, 25 minutes? I they, would love they that. They gave me... Uh, this is the second season, so I'm doing something right uh, for now. Uh, so, yeah, it's a good show. We have musical guests on and uh, interesting guests just to talk. Well, people I find interesting, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Do too, so. I actually watched uh, part of the episode they gave me yesterday. It was uh, a great interview with Ozzy. Oh, yeah, had yeah, a really yeah. cool Ooh. feel to it. it. had a cool feel to it. It was like almost like... You were hanging out in someone's basement. You don't feel like you're watching like a typical uh, talk show, and uh, it was it was really interesting. Yeah, I've interviewed Ozzy a bunch of times because you know, I've worked on some of his video press kits and I've toured with him, and you know, he's a great guy. And that was probably our best interview we've ever done together. He's a good guy. I mean, yeah, yeah we've had him in here. Yeah, yeah, every everyone likes. Ozzy. He was great for us, man. Yeah. Yeah, what? who doesn't like Ozzy? Yeah, everyone likes Ozzy. Like, no one that goes, Ozzy's a dick. Yeah. I, I, you, you never hear stuff like that. But you don't no. think Black Sabbath was the greatest band ever, right? Me? Yeah. yeah I th I'm one of those people, yeah. Yes. Wow, look at that. Damn Jimmy it. Norton does, too. Jimmy is the hugest 
black yeah, powder. Yeah, not everyone's yeah. cup of tea, but, you know, considering what they were doing when they were doing it, they kind of came out of this musical vacuum, and they kind of were, were the cornerstone of a genre. And so, like them or not, you have to give them props for at least being innovators. And, and for that, you know, and besides that, I like the records. So. That's what I've been saying. And, like, a guy like Santana who stole from Rat Salad off of uh, Paranoid, nobody believes me, but I'm telling but you, you know, Sabbath were innovators. But, but yeah, they were. And, uh, and uh, but Carlos Santana and his band, fantastic. All right, listen, Jimmy's sounding smart and stuff, but you 2 Sunday, Bloody Sunday, he he thinks was ripped off from Black Sabbath's Sunday. The title was Sabbath, Sabbath Bloody, Bloody Sabbath, Sabbath. Bloody Sabbath, That's right. right. I, it, 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 and that's a stretch, though. It's, 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 it's a bit, bit, bit of a stretch. Maybe Thank it's you. the same Thank thing. You. Thank you, Mr. Ron. It is Thank not. You. Henry's being polite because he probably has friends with Bono. They hang out and pull trains together. He's a nice I, dude. Uh, ne I never. I don't, don't think they would. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they are pulling buddy. trains like with what our teeth. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, yeah, they're no. hanging. That's not. Hey, what happened to your arm? Who did you? Oh, I. I fell magnificently in front of a bunch of people in front of a supermarket the other day in New York. That's just like you know. I tripped and I'm a klutz and so I, I cranked my wrist. So there's the no ground. real good story? That's no, sucks, sir. I just That's a up. good story for whoever saw it because seeing anyone fall is funny. Seeing someone fall and going, fucking Henry Rollins. Well, that's, that's what happened. I got up and a few people went, hey, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, thanks. I'm like, whoa, aren't you Henry Rollins? I went, yes. Dude. The man who falls on his face. Yeah, it was a spectacular fall. Yeah. Went and got x-rayed. Apparently, I'm okay. The last time we talked to you, you were traveling all over the world. Have you yeah. continued that? Yeah, I, tra I, tra I travel. And it's true. You don't really have a house, right? You have kind of like an apartment. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I have a house. Bought? I have a house. Oh, yeah. Because I think we talked to you and you said you had, like, we're just renting because you were just always away anyway. And no, I, I have a, You just had a place for your stuff. No, mostly. I have a... I have a I've, I've, property uh i'm not there all that often but yeah i spend up to six months or more on the road i'd, I'd be out 12 months if they let me but uh yeah i tour all the time um all not even the just the touring because you know a lot of entertainers tour you're just traveling yeah you i mean I, just well, I do the, i, I, I do world. a lot of uso work that puts me in places like afghanistan and iraq and and i i do a lot of that yeah. also i just go places that interest me but i'm trying to remember because uh last time we talked it was like four or five years ago and uh you're on a railroad the Siberian Railroad. Yeah, I did the Trans-Siberian Express. All oh, right. Remember that? From, yeah. Uh, Moscow to Vladivostok. Yeah, I go all over Africa just seeing stuff, all parts of Asia, uh, just parts that, of the world that interest me. And most of the world is interesting to me. So when I have a chance, I go for, like, you know, non-work-related thing and I write about it I get good stories I can take to the stage so it always kind of turns into something but yeah I mean the world's an in a fascinating place you can see a lot I was just in, in Egypt and Turkey recently uh, with the Indiana USA. Rollins yeah and uh, I saw a lot of Cairo that I'd never seen before it's pretty it's a pretty hairy city I mean you can turn the wrong corner and, and it'll go south kills. on you I thought yeah. you meant the women no, I, I, I <laughs> never met many Egyptian women in no. Egypt. No. No, huh? You don't see much? Well, they, it's not like they, they run up and go, hey, what's going on? No. So you just started walking down some streets and stuff in Cairo that you just should not be walking down? Yeah. And what did you see? Uh, just a lot of, you know, broke-ass neighborhoods. Because they say even just as uh, to go to the places that are, quote, safe is a scary not thing so to do safe. these, yeah, 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 these yeah. days. And you're, like, getting away from that and really... Uh, yeah. I, did, the I, I, zone. I, I do that in a lot of foreign cities uh, I, at night. I, I've done it all over Morocco and, and all over uh, the world just because I like to see cities at night. I just like to walk around them. And, and uh, when you do that, like in Casablanca, as soon as they see a, a solo white guy, they go, oh, he's here for the women and the hash and all that. So these these people come up. They go, England, number one. You go, I'm from America. I love America. So my friend, I have hashish. I have women. Please come to my... You know, I, I'm really not up for that. Yeah. I just want to walk around. Oh, but my friend, don't be shy. I'm like, I'm not shy. I, I don't want a whore or some hashish. Thank you, though. I'm just checking out the city. I'm, I'm just walking around. Yeah, and in Bangkok at night, people come up. Hey, we'll take you to this place. I'm like, nah, I just want to walk around and smell the garbage rotting. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm sure. What do they offer you in, in Bangkok? Uh, well, you know, to get your cock banged. Yeah. Uh, I don't well, you doubt know, like the eleven-year-old boys to wash you or whatever. Isn't that just uh, curious? Yeah, what does that go for? I, I have <laughs> no idea. But you know, vacation that, packages uh... are available, and I'm sure we'll see you there soon. Uh, no, I. Uh, it's, uh, the <laughs> the, the travel the prostitution thing is not all those really questions for you. Nah. No. Nah. No. No. You get six nights and five days in a nursery. <laughs> That's what they do over there. They're creeps. The Gary Glitter Gary plan. Glitter. Gary Glitter, yeah. This is a Gary Glitter story. Yeah. Yeah, one of our greatest stories ever. What a dummy. 
Wow. Oh, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, he uh, got his, his computer checked out. <laughs> right. And they went, wow, you sure like young, naked boys. Yeah. Uh, better tell the authorities about that. I heard actual boys fell out of his computer. It wasn't even like no. pictures. It no. was young boys. Yes, yes. Falling out. Yeah, they fell right out of that little PC slot. You would the think side. you would just kind of, you know, make sure... If you're into that, to tape up the side at least. That, you, no, yeah. maybe you just blow up your computer. Your Gary Glitter, your soul couple of records, buy a new computer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Make us, what do you mean a song, right? Fuck your hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I press it? Yeah, Hit yourself. <laughs> wow, that was a big crash. <laughs> Trees. Rock and roll, from Gary Glitter to rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all you got for Henry Rollins? I didn't say that. I mean, nothing for Henry Rollins. I, I'm just looking at Henry thinking he lost a little weight. Like, yeah, he got yeah. small. Yeah. Like, the last time I, like, seen you, seen you, you was, like, super... I, you're like I, that I, diesel I, I had about 25 more pounds on me. Yes, like sir. You, you had that scary, like, the like when I first saw Henry Rollins, he was like, he was I was jacked. like, that dude looks like he he'll jacked. fuck somebody up, for, like, for real. I think he can still fuck some people. Well, I'm not I, saying I don't think he can. Well, no, no, I, I used to power lift, either. which gives you, like, this, like, you know, massive ass and big back. And I, at one point, I just figured, well, here's a great way to, like, blow my knees out and never walk straight again. So I, I, I stopped lifting the poundage. And when you stop lifting that kind of weight, the muscle melts off you like wax. Because it's like, in six weeks, you're like, wow, your clothes are all baggy. And I'm 45, so I, I just figure if I keep lifting like that, I'm going to blow it one day and be hobbled. Because, you know, you, you don't get your hips back. You don't get your knees back. So, uh, yeah, I look different. Just slowing so, it down a little bit. Well, just I'd rather be training when I'm 65 instead of being that guy who can't lift his arm over his shoulder because right. of rotator cuff damage. So, guys like me and Henry who work out, I prefer to do, like, the bike. <laughs> the bike? <laughs> I get on the exercise bike and I listen to Jimmy, my iPod. Jimmy's getting in shape. Trying to, Jimmy. <laughs> um, he's a shape already, though. Do you, do you uh, have no do, idea? Do, what does it. anyone ever put you put you in the spotlight and kind of highlight you? I mean, get into your life and stuff like you. Oh yeah, no. uh, Henry, you have no idea. Really, just you, we you, don't have a show without Jimmy yeah. Norton stories. <laughs> did, did you live alone? Or oh yeah, yeah. You, you got. Oh, you, you, Why don't you give him a story, Jimmy? Just one. Jimmy, please. I live alone. Yeah. I, I live in a nice place. I live alone. Yeah. Sorry, right. I have a nice apartment. Jimmy yeah. likes some unusual things. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it's up to him to what tell fall, you. What falls out, Jimmy? What falls out of they, your computer? They consider. Uh, well, it's actually what leaks out of it. Um, <laughs> they consider golden showers to be bizarre. Right. Some people would. A yeah. lot of people would. You can't. Come on, I mean, you're, you're you're like a rock star, man. You gotta. Well, um, some people would find <laughs> urinating on someone else uh, a bit much. Yeah. That's well, he of... doesn't urinate on uh, somebody else. No. It's uh, he likes women to come in. Wow. And uh, and uh, drink a few Perriers and. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It well, is. you know, Jimmy, <laughs> this is Manhattan, New York in 2006. I guess you can just, you know, get your kicks. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Ah, there's no guessing. Of, well, you, you, you know, as long as there's no dogs or no kids, I think we're all good yeah. to go. That's yeah. a really good movie. You no big you dogs. You play like, like the suit, the side bad guy. Really, I, I, I'm desperate for movie work. I take whatever I can get. No, no, there was one you played. It was a big one. And you played like the side bad guy. You didn't, you didn't oh, say much, but you were in it a lot. That movie oh, Heat, yeah, that was Heat. kind of a, a small bad. That's guy. right. He was. A, that's yeah. right. You never seen fucking Heat. You said. It was, no, I know he's good, in it. Good film and it. it was fun no. to you know yeah. fun to do scenes with Al Pacino. <clears throat> that was fun. Nice yeah, guy. Geez. That's right. Did you get to do De Niro scenes or just Pacino? No, I never met De Niro. It, he wasn't on the set a day I was there, but I, I did scenes a few days with Al Pacino, and <laughs> right. it is it's cool when a guy you you admire so much that is cool because you know we all grew up watching Scarface Godfather Dog Day After, you know, all those movies and so if the guy's going to be a jerk it's going to be kind of heartbreaking because you have to take back all your, your well in those days laser discs but he, he's actually a really cool guy. He's cool yeah. to everyone on the set. He's a very cla classy guy and I've found I mean you all meet famous people all the time but I've found like the bigger more famous people, I guess they don't have anything to prove. Like your Ozzy Osbournes, they're often disarmingly cool mm -hmm. where you meet the person kind of on their way up and they kind of blow you off. And yeah. A little too hip to hang around. Listen to too many of their people who are waiting some, like right on the wings to tell like you that. not yeah. to say this yeah. or and, that. And, or... and at this point, you know, I got, since I got this show, I'm interviewing famous people or whatever. So it's interesting to see how these people carry themselves. I mm -hmm. got a question for you. Do you have to deal with the publicist? 
See, yes, see, yeah, 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 yeah. We the interview. People come in first we interview they, famous oh. people all the time, and every once in a while, you get someone to sit in that seat, and then a wall of publicists. Yeah, and they're shaking their head like shaking this. Their head and, and, oh, you can't ask them that. Yeah. Oh, and you know the guy that wouldn't mind. You're not asking these scandalous questions. Yeah. You know, but you know the guy or girl that's sitting there would love to just talk, man. Just we're sitting and talking. We've yeah. had guests dragged out. Carmen Electra was dragged out yeah. of, of our studio. Would be. Be and I don't remember because she was saying something they didn't want her to Honestly, say. Honestly, God, I, I don't hung even... out with her. I thought she was really cool. Yeah, no, we liked her a yeah, lot. Yeah, no, she was a nice no, publicist. Don't, don't confuse us. We liked her a yeah, lot. Yeah. It was the publicists, you know, that are w way involved in her career. I don't huh. remember what we were talking about, and they literally maybe she was a little too raw out. for them or something. I mean, because oh, yeah. she'll say what's on her mind. Because <laughs> yeah. they try to. I a lot of these people try to mold. Uh, an image out of these yeah. celebrities, and or just make them like safe for prime time. Or yeah, something. yeah. I don't want some news thinking that getting a, a real Americans don't say this word, that word, and think about all these things. So they, they give them the sanitized version, and it becomes completely unbelievable mm -hmm. immediately. You know, yeah. like you're, where you're like, oh come on, man, I'm not stupid. So yeah, I I see how that would offend. But no, I I've interviewed a lot of famous people on the show so far, and ever, so far it's been great. We've not had one jerk in there. The only thing that's been interesting is, w well, we've had women. Uh, Penelope Cruz was a guest. Uh, Daryl Hannah were guests, and they're both wonderful. But they're very nervous to meet me. And, you know, they're like, like, uh, uh, I don't like, and I, I, I don't want anyone nervous to meet me. That's, that's, that's no good. Anyway, people I'm gonna ask, are you mature now? Like, are yeah, you, like, you sound like a dude that, like, yeah. has some type of religious thing going. No, sir. <laughs> None at all. Like, but, you don't sound like a fucking ex goddamn yeah, rocker at all. Yeah, man. you're surprised that people are nervous no to meet you? Well, no, no, are no, you no. I, me? I, I, I just don't think if you're gonna be a host of a show that you would want to put a guest in an environment uncomfortable. where right, they're right. uncomfortable. That's what the fuck I tell you two motherfuckers all the time. The Is environment. uncomfortable? I mean, you all are Cool to me. Time. See, it, thank it, you. It, it would be a drag if I walked in there and there and you guys said, "Oh, hey, bitch, sit the yeah, fuck yeah. down." No, no, so no, what? No. What's on Henry Rollins? No, no. Well, no, yeah. the, I'm, well why are you surprised exactly. that people are <laughs> uncomfortable to meet Manning you? Gets here. I don't know. <laughs> but you but have, I, I, you I got that look. Like I, you could I don't, snap at any second. I, I don't want them to feel that way because how good is the interview going to be if the guy's like, ah? And you got real tattoos, dude. Like you, you're you have the real like you know you have the lots of people have tattoos. No, no, no. But you have like your shit is like that. Oh. So, right, it's before <laughs> shit was real. Like these motherfuckers with this motherfucker got like fucked up tattoos. That's that, old school ink. That's is what old you're school ink. Yeah, real like it's, you know, like it's not a lot of pretty colors. Yeah, it's just There's a, too many pretty colors yeah. in tattoos. Sort of these a days. skull. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you 20, like a real twenty five years man. old. They all look like sailor tattoos. Some of those were done with yeah. a big pen. Did you, would you have yes. an animal? Did you have an animal, man? Do I have an animal? Well, no. Was you ever an uh, animal? Oh my god, yeah. Was I ever an animal? Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm, like I know of you from Hit, television, but I'm hitting people. Come on, man, stop trying to. No, no, no. Trying to be like right, but I'm talking. No, 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 no. Was you ever like a fucking like like not an asshole? No, no, no. I'm asking you. Was you fucking like okay? Was you fucking five girls at a time? Was you knocking motherfuckers out? Was you smoking okay all type of foul shit? Never, never did the drugs and drink. Been drunk like three times in my life when I was 17. Just never dug it. Smoked pot once, didn't like it. Tried LSD a few times. Interesting. Don't want to make a habit of that. Women more than one at a time. No. Been with women, yes, many times. Lucky me. What was your vice? What was your big yeah, vice? Vice? Yeah, yeah everybody we'll gotta have an artistic yeah, outlet, man. Yeah. Come on, man. We'll get you off. Getting on a stage and jamming? At, yeah. In the old I, 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 well, I, I play music all the time. I, I've averaged over 100 shows a year for 25 yeah. years. So, uh, and, and doing that, being kind of trying to be performance great all the time, it keeps me more in the gym than anything else and watching my diet getting ready for a tour and so i've kind of had this life like kind of like a show dog or a thoroughbred horse like you, you're running around the track you put it up you comb it down you throw the blanket over it and you see it the next day and, and so i've lived more like that which i know is kind of lightweight so yeah i've gotten in a lot of fights never hit a woman but i've gotten a lot of fights with men lost some won some did a lot of damage to some guys faces broken more noses than i can remember <laughs> Quite not, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a tough guy. I'm not trying to say I'm yeah, the man. Whatever, I'm just man. saying, but yeah, yeah, I've you mixed it up did. and I've gotten my ass kicked a lot. Probably too. had a lot of guys coming up, especially, you know, 
back a few years ago that just wanted to, you know, be able to tell their friends that they, hey, look, I punched Henry Rollins. There was a lot of that, and it was a drag, because all I wanted to do was get out there and sing the damn yeah. song. We had the guy swinging at your head, or the guy in Angel Dust, you know, like holding you down and punching your lights out. So I did all that. Uh, but no, I never did the five girls at once. No, I never, like, you know, threw Fair the thing enough. out the window. And I, don't, I don't think any lower. I'm, I, I'm, no, I'm kind of just boring in that way. What do you think of, um, what do you think of, uh, 9 11? You think it's conspiracy, or? Oh, boy. No. Um, Nice. I, I saw that Loose Change documentary, uh -huh. w which is interesting We've been to on me. that lately, by well, the way, Well, it, it raises an interesting point of view, but I just... I think the human nature, it, a lot of people would have to be keeping a huge secret. I just don't think in this day and age of opportunities for book deals and miniseries <laughs> that somebody in a capitalist society would go like... Mum is the word, and I'm partially responsible for 3,000 people getting killed for no good reason. Right. So the conspiracy theory, while it, that loose change documentary does raise some interesting points that, that make you think, at least. No, I do not think it was a conspiracy. I don't think the uh, Pentagon wanted to have Al-Qaeda fly planes into the Twin Towers. I do think that from uh, Reagan, Bush 1, Clinton, and Bush 2, I don't think we g those presidents gave enough attention to Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda, and the yeah. Taliban. There you go. And I'm I'm just saying because I've read the CIA books by CIA people saying like guys like Robert Baer who are really interesting who were there on the ground in these places for two decades and said you guys you you don't want to pull us out of Afghanistan we, you, there's a thing called Al Qaeda don't take your eye off Man, the ball. Man, fuck Henry Rollins. Because <laughs> <laughs> he does the reading thing, Patrice. It's all oh, about man. reading. We call him copy and paste. Oh, you ain't shit. Oh, you motherfucker. Your ghetto name is copy. Copy and paste. Man. He reads some. <laughs> Where's the lead singer from? He uh, looks at the loose change thing that's been packaged as, look at this conspiracy. Well, it, it, Where's it, the nigga uh, from ACDC? I want to talk to that is, motherfucker. It uh, is interesting. Bon Scott might agree. Yeah. But I, I still didn't make you me think that uh, a it, bunch though. of people lied about no. Getting killed and or whatever explosives were planted in buildings where people are working on a daily basis. <laughs> it's That'd be a little rough. It, it stretches. A it does bit. stretch it just a tad, yes. just a little bit. But the important thing I wanted to ask you too, it's it's, it's about your show. Yes, sir. Do you have comedians on? Uh, not yet. Although I'd like to, you know, the the second season we've done like it's been on three weeks, so we got a long way to go. We got twenty shows in the season. So wow. if I could have a guy like uh, uh, Patton Oswalt on, <laughs> who, who I think is a funny dude, I, I'd like to have him on the show. Why don't you just spit on me? <laughs> <laughs> I like Patton. Well, he's funny. What y'all y'all don't like him? No, 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 no. I, I, I think he's funny. I, I play I that know, record that, all the that, time. That, Jimmy that, Norton like is a, a fantastic stand-up. That's comic. like saying to a girl like, "Hey, are you horny?" And if she's and she's going, yeah, if there was a man here, I'd fuck him. <laughs> oh, I, I, he had no interest in Norton. And he was dead serious. Uh, like, you know, I, I really do love Patton Oswalt. None. And his friend Brian Poussein, very interesting young man. Do you have any suggestions for who should come on? J Jimmy Norton, you unknown motherfucker. No, you're not going to have D well, minus I, list I thought, celebrity. I, Henry could well, break I, the I, comedian. I, 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 I thought your job was here at this station. I didn't know no, you were looking for saved. a guest game. He's looking for any coattail he can jump on. Well, why not? I'm not. Let me, let me tell you guy. something about Jimmy Norton. He's in an HBO series that starts in a um, little over a month. Like, like, nice going. HBO's Louis. hard to break into. Lucky Louis. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they have their choice. He's blowing up so. uh, right in front of our eyes. We only have a minute left on the show, and then All like right. a master computer shuts off. So Master computer. So where's your show on? It's on the Independent Film Channel. Yeah, Saturday nights at 10 o'clock. And o'clock. you know, uh, Jimmy, maybe someday we'll get you on Wait, there. If I'm lucky, I'll okay. have you on. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be me who'd be lucky. And are you performing? W I'll spoken, be, uh, the, spoken word or anything? Well, that? Uh, not right now. As I finish taking a break tour. from all that. Well, I'm in band practice right now. I'm actually practicing down the street from here every day, getting the band ready for August. We're going out. You're gonna nice. do something cool. Doing a lot of shows, I hope. And Kurt Cobain, man. The Black Flag was a huge influence. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's pretty interesting when you find that out later on. That's yeah. pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he was a good songwriter. I'm sorry he's dead. All right. It's Henry Rollins, everyone. It's on the IFC channel uh, Saturday nights at 10 p.m. On course uh, the following Thursday at 11. There you go. All right. And I'll be in Chicago tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. Zany's wonderful. And, Patrice uh, O'Neill, thanks a lot. Keep in touch and listening. Patrice, and everything. oh, yeah, he can play that tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy birthday. Program complete.